President Biden speaking with Israel's prime minister, a call expected to focus in part on the airstrike Israel calls a tragic incident, killing seven aid workers in a convoy. Florida Republican Congressman and combat veteran Mike Waltz tells Fox Business. This was a major screw up uh, on the part of the IDF. However, it was an accident versus what Hamas does, which is deliberately target civilians and target aid workers that aren't cooperating with them. Fox's Peter Ducey at the White House. The president did publicly say he was outraged about World Central kitchen workers being killed in Gaza, even though now we know that very same day, the president approved more bombs to Israel to aid their fight against Hamas. An Israeli Defense Forces spokesman says results of the airstrike investigation are being presented to the prime minister and defense minister. Three of the aid workers killed were from the UK. More than 600 British jurists are now urging the government to suspend arms sales to Israel. A new federal rule will make it harder to reclassify the jobs of government workers. Just before President Trump left office, he signed an executive order that would allow for the reclassification of thousands of civil servant jobs, making it easier to dismiss bureaucrats and replace them with partisan appointees. President Biden rescinded the order, but the former president has said if elected again, he will reinstate it as he views many career government workers as part of the deep state. Now the Office of Personnel Management issued a new rule that bars those workers from being reclassified as partisan workers or at-will employees. The former president could still have his own rules drafted up, but it takes time and his effort could be slowed by legal challenges. Fox's Jessica Rosenthal. America is listening to Fox News. Waiting on a tax return? Hopefully it ends up in your hands. Fraudulent tax returns due to identity theft increased by 30% in 2023. If you're in a bind this tax season, LifeLock can help. Our U.S.-based restoration specialists are experts dedicated to helping solve your identity theft issues. And all LifeLock plans are backed by the Million Dollar Protection Package. So we'll reimburse you up to the limits of your plan if you lose money due to identity theft. Help protect your information this tax season with LifeLock. Save up to 25% your first year with promo code NEWS at LifeLock.com. Life insurance. Why are you putting it off? Can't afford it? Too much hassle? Think you don't need it? There's lots of excuses for putting off life insurance. But if you weren't there, who would pay the mortgage and other bills? With Ethos, you could be covered in 10 minutes and boom, family protected. Ethos, fast and easy online term life insurance. Up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at getethos.com. That's getethos.com. Air Comfort Service, heating, cooling, and insulation, weather. Chief Meteorologist Dave Murray. Windy and chilly times continue going through our Thursday afternoon. Clouds dominate, a little bit of sunshine, 50 for the high. Tonight, a slow clearing process, a light freeze away from the city, 30 degrees. Sunshine on Friday, let's try to get it up to 55, 30 degrees again on Friday night. Then Saturday, sunshine in control, 60, some showers on Sunday. This is 97.1 FM Talk. Chief Meteorologist Dave Murray. Hi, I'm Libby, and I'm a patient at Cardinal Glennon. With your help, Homers for Health can make a huge impact on my hospital. From new spaces to new treatments, a difference is being made for patients every single day. Glennon kids like me owe everything to people like you. Please make your pledge for patients today at homersforhealth.org. Thank you so much for your support. Again, that's homersforhealth.org. I'm getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20, a Pfizer vaccine. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine. It can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. 
You know, most people never get to sit down with elected officials and ask them about the important issues. I'm Judge Mike Carter, and that's exactly why I host the news talk program, Justice in Journalism, with me, Judge Mike Carter. My goal is to bring those who represent us closer to the people they serve. I ask the questions you would in a no-nonsense manner. That's why we've been able to interview so many top local, state, and federal officials, because as a judge, I offer an unbiased, one-on-one conversation that's hard to find elsewhere these days. Besides serving as judge, I have a journalism degree, which is how the name of the show, Justice in Journalism, journalism with me judge mike carter evolved you never know who we'll interview next from governor parson to prosecutors sports figures to missouri business leaders justice and journalism with me judge mike carter airs on fox and abc you can also watch our past shows at mikecarter.com where we ask the questions and let you be the judge if you'd like to see more of judge mike carter's interviews on his program justice and journalism visit mikecarter.com that's mikecarter.com Download the free Upside app and earn real cash back every time you buy gas. Download the free Upside app now and use promo code GIFT for an extra 25 cents per gallon on your first fill-up. That's promo code GIFT. The Any Fry Show YouTube live chat poll of the day is sponsored by Ruler Foods. Low prices, no coupons. Ruler Foods. That is exactly what I needed to hear. Thank God someone here knows what you're talking about. That's us. That's right. Gotta love this American ride. All right, you need to take the time and get the full picture. Don't get me wrong, I love the ladies. I mean, they rev my engine, but they don't belong in the newsroom. It is Anchor Man, not Anchor Lady. This is the Annie Fry Show. Today, the Biden administration announced that it's going to pull back its plans to refill the SPR, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. You know, they drained that to try and bring gas prices down earlier. Well, they've been trying to fill it back up, but now it is way too expensive. So they say we hit $86 today on the futures market. They say it costs too much, so we're not going to do it. And now is the time of huge political, uh, geopolitical risk out there. So, I don't know. This summer could be a tough summer if you want to drive somewhere. Okay, so we're not going to refill the Fox Business Report, not going to refill the strategic oil reserves because it's too expensive. And this is a cyclical thing that we're learning here from uh, the Biden administration, which is, what are those oil reserves for? Is it for political maneuvers to lower gas prices so people feel better about what they're – Brad, is that what they're for? Just to make sure that I, – I, I keep looking and I see the word strategic. At an and, opportune time, you politically, strategically – I just feel like maybe it has more to do with a time of war. Oh. Whenever there would be a Why shortage. Would you need fuel? We so just run need, everything on solar. No, we don't have solar tanks Batteries. yet. Batteries. Nope, don't have those yet. Lithium. No, not in it's, our military. It's very environmentally friendly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, until they get shot and blown up. And I think we have, do we have to get the lithium from China? We have it here. Ye- we have some here, but we don't really have a robust mining program because of the EPA rela- regulations. Well, those are, the, those are their regulations. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> There's a conundrum here. Uh, welcome into the Andy Fry Show. I'm, I, don't, I don't have any, like, deep dive on the petroleum or the strategic oil reserves like i don't i'm not an energy expert i will not play one on the radio but isn't it ironic that they were depleted to lower gas prices and what are gas prices right now when was the last time you got gas uh 389 389 yes that's very high yes yeah i'm back to that point where i can't where where my credit card won't allow me to fill my vehicle because the cost gets too high how big is your gas tank? I want to say it's like 35 or 40 gallons. <laughs> That's obnoxious. Yeah. How often do you have to fill your tank? Uh, let's see. About once every week and a half or so. And what is the credit card cutoff? 100 bucks? 100 bucks. So at 100 bucks, 3 quarters of a tank. Your bank is saying that's enough for you. Yeah, that you you've you've had enough. Yeah. Now I could go to a different filling station and finish filling it up, but that's super annoying. So we deplete our strategic oil reserves 
so that Joe Biden can lower gas prices. And now they're empty and we can't afford to replenish them. And gas prices are high. This is a problem. Yes. You see how you can't just move to, you know, tweak the political moment and have it last. You need to have good sound policy so that you can benefit the American people in the long term for the right reasons. The political here and now is not going to last the test of time and you will have to reap what you sow. Here's another story. It's another Fox Business story. Another California small business and its workers have seemingly suffered at the hands of the statewide's newly enacted $20 minimum wage. What was the, fir- what was the first hourly wage that you made? And 515. Where were you? I was working at a Dairy Queen. A Dairy Queen? I was a busser at PK's restaurant, formerly in a time, I believe, before my existence in 1984, was a Pizza King. And then it became PK's. It was the fancy, nice restaurant in Edwardsville. Uh, when I was 16 years old, I got a job there, and I was a busser, and I made three fifty an hour. Because you could get tips? Yeah, big air quotes on the Brad get tips part, because all of the servers were supposed to pull their tips, 10% yeah. of their tips. And then you had two busters on staff, you split it 50-50. Three, four, whatever it was, you split it. I do not think that those servers... <laughs> I mean, I remember working an entire, like the entire shift, uh, the entire time that PKs was open in days, and I'd make like $14. Oh, that doesn't sound right. That math doesn't add up. Correct. And I don't think anybody cared at the time. I think this is kind of how, how business used to go. Three fifty an hour. I remember getting my paycheck, and it, my paycheck would be like $40. And I mean, I was 16, so it's not like I was working a 40-hour work week. I'd, I'd have these like itty-bitty paychecks. They, they wouldn't even be over $40 frequently and i'd get the paycheck and i'd be like why am i doing this (laughs) what am i doing here but it was 40 bucks that i had that i you know didn't have before and it got me to where i needed to be when i was 16. 20 dollar minimum wage it's it's very frustrating to think that i would have had to work for what would that be about five hours Mm -hmm. of bussing tables at pk's and that would have been in about the year 2000 so this would be 24 years oh my gosh 24 years ago it w- I have worked five hours of busing tables to make in one hour what I would make in California. Times have changed. Like, look at the progress and the improvement. We finally arrived at $20 an hour, and the people rejoice. Um, <laughs> mass layoffs? It's a shock, Monica Navarro, former assistant general manager at Foster's Freeze, and Lamour said Wednesday on the bottom line, quote, it would have been nice to have a notice so we could go get some applications out i could prepare them the best i can do honestly is honestly give them some references when making their way to work monday morning navarro and her team learned upon arrival that the restaurant owner had made the decision to close its doors for good the owner told the local fox affiliate kmph that this was the quote last thing they wanted to do but knew by Friday night that the business likely wouldn't be able to absorb the wage hike and they didn't want to ruin their Easter Sunday. So they told them on Monday. The new California statewide legislation went into effect Monday and enforces a $20 minimum wage for restaurants that have at least 60 locations nationwide, except those that make and sell their own bread. <laughs> what a clause. What, what an opportunity there for, uh, I think it was the Panera Correct? Yeah. Wasn't it a Panera, yeah. a Panera owner who donated a lot of money to Gavin Newsom's campaign? Yeah, that's that's what it was. I they eventually recanted on that because because they got caught, basically, is what happened. But yeah, okay. it was a it was a you know political campaign donation, and he's like, oh, let me put this little carve out in there so it's that good my to know guy, people. Yeah. Uh, Quote, two of my coworkers were actually going to, uh, in to clock in for the morning, and right after that, that's when I got a phone call that we were closing. So they found out right as they were about to clock in for the day. We had gotten a text in the group chat that we were shutting down, and I completely thought it was an April Fool's joke. Yeah, Monday was April Fool's yeah. Day. Joke's on you, I suppose. After speaking further with management and Foster's Freeze owner, Navarro learned that the minimum wage law was a primary factory factor in the restaurant's demise. So another policy... You know, the, the idea of jacking the minimum wage up to a, quote, livable wage. You're working in a fast food restaurant and you're working 20 hours a week. 
30 hours a week, maybe 40 hours a week. Maybe you're picking up overtime. It's not easy work. I mean, it's not necessarily intellectually stimulating work, but if it's paying the bills Mm -hmm. and that's what you need to do to pay the bills, then good on you for doing it. But it's not really easy work to stand over a fryer all day or to stand over a hot grill all day or to deal with the American public all day. It's, It's not a simple thing to do, but it's not something that if you're a problem, you can't be removed and replaced immediately. By another person who can spend 24 hours in training or one shift in training and then be given the keys to run the operation. So we say we want to put minimum wage up to a place that is unsustainable for the businesses that need to pay it out. And their option is to close. This is a perfect example. Both of these are perfect examples of where the left gets undue credit for caring for the little guy and and working to make life uh, more affordable, more livable in the United States of America by doing these government interventions that are so short-sighted that they end up hurting the people they're trying to help twice as much. I mean, it's not crazy to say that foreign policy right now, the the conflicts that are going on in the world, they were kind of living on the edge a little bit about what could happen, you know, if, if, if we had a dramatic story tomorrow about one country taking a specific kind of action against another country, and I hope I'm not manifesting anything into existence here, but if that happened tomorrow, it would be shocking, but it wouldn't be as shocking as it should be. It would be shocking, but it wouldn't be surprising. Yeah. And our petroleum reserves are depleted. Mm-hmm. And we depleted them for a political payday for the president. And gas is still high. What is gas going to cost when we have no strategic oil reserves? We need it for some sort of conflict. And they got to take it out of the corner pump because we don't have it in the strategic oil reserves. What are they going to do to the cost of gas gas then? I don't think people even realize this. That what you're talking about there reminds me of like. Whenever I, I would sit down, I'd be talking to my grandfather who lived through World War II. He had a blind eye, so he wasn't Drafted. deployed. So he was here, and he mm-hmm. was a farmer, and he was doing that stuff. And I remember him telling me stories about, like, rubber, for example, having to dig through piles of tires to find one that would work to replace the old one that's got – so one that was less worn out because all of the new stuff was going over to to the war effort. It's going to be like that. Because we don't have a strategic petroleum reserve, they're going to have to take all that stuff. And you're talking, you're probably talking ten or fifteen bucks a gallon, because everything that would take priority. Unsustainable, which is kind of an ironic word for it. I mean, and if you if you repeatedly watch Pete Buttigieg, he was just on Fox yesterday, so he's been in a lot of my news feed. He's talking about how you know, like it, there used to be people who thought we would never have non corded phones or whatever it is that he said. Listen, the idea that we could have alternative power sources for vehicles is not a bad idea. And if you're somebody who thinks that the that, that the concept of electric vehicles or the idea that we would be, you know, hydrogen powered or something in the future, this is how progress happens as you have ideas, you try things and then you got to figure out it's not necessarily uh, of course it's a huge innovation to figure out like how to make it function in the first place to say, "Oh, you could power this with that as an alternative." But then you have to make it so that it's plausible, so that it's reasonable to say the way we're doing things now is now outdated because we have a new system in place. There are no grids anywhere in the United States that are capable of handling what this administration is saying that we need to do within years. Not even close. No. Uh I, I keep going back to this story, but they were talking about uh, over-the-road trucks or trucks that were EVs, semis, that sort of thing. And this guy, this business owner is like, yeah, let me move my whole fleet to this. I'm going to do this. He submitted his request for charging stations, and the town laughed at him because it was like 14. Was this Joliet? It might have been. Illinois? Yeah, I or know it was the a- news reports are coming out, Joliet, Illinois. I'm like, guys, come on. Guys. <laughs> but it, it was definitely an Illinois town. He said they laughed at us because yeah. what we wanted to draw just to charge our trucks was more than what it takes the factory to build the trucks. Right. 
And, and like do the math. Yeah. It's not there. And again, we're not. I always liken this to the monkey bars at the playground. You don't want to let go of one until you have a hold of the other, until you've got a firm grasp of the other. We barely got our fingertips on EV and green energy as we're trying to swing over. And everybody's like, we need to just let go and go. And it's like, no, we're going to fall. We're not there. We're not in that position. And like you said, it's not. we're not to the point where we won't get there. We will get there eventually because that's, like you said, how progress works. But we're just forcing it instead of letting the market do it. And whenever the market does it, they'll do it better. How much of the green powered vehicles that are on the road right now, Brad, are subsidized by the government to be oh, even in the realm of affordability? All of them. I saw a Tesla Model S, uh, Model S Plaid, I think is what it was, in 2022. Was, all I can think of is we've gone to play. Yeah, that's exactly why they call it. It's their sport model. It's it's an incredibly Elon Musk thing to we've do. Gone to plaid. Yeah. yeah. So they called it the model plaid because it's their fast one. It was a hundred and that's hilarious. One hundred and thirty three thousand yeah. dollars. The same model in twenty twenty four with government subsidies is like sixty five thousand dollars. So the government and remember the government has exactly zero dollars. Right. They have your dollars. <laughs> And they're spending the dollars that you don't have that your grandchildren will have to figure out. The green E85 gasoline, ethanol, mm -hmm. th that is all subsidized to make mm -hmm. it more affordable and more attractive. Like, these are not real prices. No. No, and e E85, you get worse fuel mileage with it. Yeah. My truck will run it, and I, I found that out. I was like, oh, it's cheaper. And I started doing the math to see how much mileage I would lose to see if it was actually cheaper. And it was about break even. To fill. And how, it was like 40 cents less a gallon. How does the, how does that affect your car, your engine? Does it matter? Well, it depends on if you have a flex fuel engine. If you have a flex fuel engine, you can absolutely run E85 with no harm. But if your car isn't designed to yeah. to run on E85, it will trash it. I wish we could have these conversations in a scientific way where we could discuss the benefits of investing and looking into green energy in a long-term fashion without having to attach one's virtue mm -hmm. and moral compass to these like dogma-like ideologies of you're you either want the planet to survive or you don't <laughs> right and we're going to be gasoline free by 2030 which is what biden said to state of the unions ago and you're like you are a senile old man. Yeah. You have no idea what you're talking about. They implement these policies. These are just two examples, more than two examples, of where the left comes in. And, and, and again, in some weird sense of generosity, I feel like I'm trying to say that, like, the fundamental ideas behind what I would say progressives, not Democrats, because that's just the political entity, but progressive individuals who are trying to think forward and in, invest in progress as a progressive these ideas are not bad ideas but they can't be a religion and they can't be something that is used against other people who can't help but marry reality to i won't even say fantasy of green energy because i think green energy is an in intelligent concept that we should be looking into and investing but we're not there yet you look at what elon musk is doing He's pushing the envelope as much mm -hmm. as you possibly can. It's kind of hard to disagree with that. Yeah. But you have to be realistic with it. And I think that's where conservatives need to come in and be a little more willing to understand the idea and speak to people in a way that's like, this isn't a bad idea. But when you set aside the green energy conversation for a second, when you go to think about wanting to make sure people live with a, a, a livable wage, and you're like, $20 an hour sounds great. Not if those jobs don't exist anymore. Right. And we have to think realistically. We have to think long-term. And these are fact-based conversations, not feeling-based conversations, which is where a lot of times you lose people. But I still think it's worth the conversation. And it's just kind of interesting. There's a stack of unfortunate events that are piling up here against the left and some very uh, hard-on-your-sleeve kind of liberal-minded policies that a lot of economists and, and energy-based scientists are like, this isn't this isn't how this is going to work. And now we're like, see? Yeah. <laughs> see? Yeah. And we do.
Let's take a quick break. Hans Vladspikowski is going to join us when we come back, as he does each Thursday. We're going to... And as we were talking about the cost of everything going up, a reminder that Ruler Foods keeps the prices down. Let's talk about a few of the things that you can save right now when you go to Ruler Foods. They run these sales every once in a while. You can go to rulerfoods.com and always be abreast of the latest deals that you can get. They have 10 for $10 sales. I like these. They, I feel like we had 10 for 10 sales when I was younger, and maybe they've gone by the wayside. Ruler Foods hasn't put them away. Brillo dish, uh, dishwashing liquid soap or all-purpose cleaner, 10 for 10 bucks. They have Powerade, 28 ounces, 10 for 10 bucks. Kroger Big K 2 liters, 10 for 10 bucks. You can also get Star Kiss Tuna, the 5-ounce uh, containers, 10 for 10. And Kroger Microwave Pizza, 10 for 10 bucks. This is a great way to save on some general staples that you probably keep in your pantry and your refrigerator. But they have sales on broader things all of the time. And the prices stay low. Get your name brands that you've come to know and love, but also save on Kroger brands at Ruler Foods prices. Go to rulerfoods.com. I'm getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20, a Pfizer vaccine. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine. It can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. Mike Carter here of Carter Law Offices. You know, as an attorney, I make my way across the great state of Missouri on a pretty regular basis. And from the rivers to the lakes and the Ozark Mountains, it's really just a pleasure to travel across the great state of Missouri. And, you know, not to mention, we have the best sports team and the best cities and the friendliest small towns in America, it seems like. And Carter Law Offices wants to make sure Missouri's story gets out far and wide about our excellent business climate, our exceptional work. Workforce. You'll hear more from me soon, Mike Carter. Visit MikeCarter.com to see Mike's interviews with all of Missouri's elected leaders. Mike Carter here of Carter Law Offices. You know, as an attorney, I make my way across the great state of Missouri on a pretty regular basis. And from the rivers to the lakes and the Ozark Mountains and the richest farmland around, it's really just a pleasure to travel across the great state of Missouri. And, you know, not to mention, we have the best sports team and the best cities and the friendliest small towns in America, it seems like. And Carter Law Offices wants to make sure Missouri's story gets out far and wide about our excellent business climate, our exceptional workforce. You'll hear more from me soon, Mike Carter. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp's software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. 
Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash free. Ramp.com slash free. R-A-M-P dot com slash free. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC. Terms and conditions apply. You're listening to The Annie Fry Show live from the Air Comfort Service Heating, Cooling, and Insulation Studio. Air Comfort Service is hiring licensed journeymen. Don't have a journeyman license? Air Comfort Service will help you get it. Get guaranteed hours year-round and more. Apply online at aircomfortservice.com. Don't miss the Mark Cox Morning Show Spring Bourbon Fling at Clayton Winehouse. Join me and Kim April 18th from 5.30 to 8. We'll sample Proof and Wood, RD1, Four Roses, and more. Get your tickets now before they're gone at 971talk.com slash events. This is the Annie Fry Show. Follow Annie on Twitter at Annie Fry Show. We are launching the next phase of our violent crime initiative in St. Louis, Missouri, Jackson, Mississippi, and Hartford, Connecticut. Well, that's the voice of the Attorney General, Merrick Garland, and St. Louis is getting a little attention from the Justice Department. Let's talk to Hans about it. We the people of the United States. More perfect. We are a form of our perfect union. Heritage legal expert, Hans von Spakovsky. Hans, welcome back to the show. It's good to have you here today. Thanks for being with us. Well, thanks for having me. You know, when I listen to the Attorney General Merrick Garland talk about wanting to take, it's the Criminal Division's Violent Crime Initiative, and apparently this has been implemented um, in Houston, Texas, with some success. And I, you know, I'm sitting in St. Louis right now, and I'm looking at a city that is riddled with crime and violence right. and, and really right. just an absolute disrespect for the law. It's really not hard, if you're here all the time, to understand how the city became this way. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on these violent cities that now need this extra focus from the Justice Department. How did they get to the point where they needed this extra attention? Well, first of all, this is an admission by Merrick Garland that violent crime is a problem in blue cities across the country. Right. But the other the other thing that this points out is that, um, look, it's not a coincidence that the cities where Merrick Garland is uh, is coming in with federal help are the cities with uh, Soros-funded rogue prosecutors. Yeah. You know, if local prosecutors did their jobs and prosecuted the violent criminals uh, in their city to the fullest extent of the law, there wouldn't be a need for federal help. And, I mean— St. Louis is an unfortunate example of that. Uh, you and I both know just how bad the former district attorney in St. Louis uh, uh, was, and that's why the feds have to come in. But look, this all of this is just more proof that the the progressive criminal justice reforms, you know, def- defund the police, don't <laughs> don't prosecute uh, f- uh, misdemeanors or uh, don't deal with a lot of felonies. Focus on the criminal, not the victims. I mean, that's that's what comes from all of those policies is this kind of violent crime. And now the, the feds have to come in and do what local prosecutors should have been doing. Yes, I completely agree with that. Hans von Spakovsky with us right now. I, I mean, it's so frustrating to see. We've had a front row seat here in St. Louis to what the ignorance to the crime that is taking place and how this crime has developed. And I mean, I remember when Kim Gardner was still in place and, you know, having a relationship with law enforcement, like what a risk it is to be in law enforcement. I commend the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department so much for showing up to do the job because they're risking their lives every single day to catch criminals that get let out. These criminals had become so arrogant in the way that they would even behave when they would get arrested because everybody understands the order of operations. And then what you have is a city where 
businesses have fled. I know that they've recently announced that there is going to be an initiative to try to draw businesses back in. But how do you do that? How do you regrow and rebirth a city when nobody's going to feel safe operating a business here and certainly sitting at a nice little, uh, you know, coffee shop, having a cup of coffee on the street when downtown St. Louis? I mean, it's laughable to even discuss it. Well, yeah, and none of that's going to happen until and unless, one, uh, you unshackle the police, you uh, refund the police to get more police officers in place. But more importantly, you also, but just as important, you get prosecutors in who are tough and are going to prosecute and aren't going to put in place, for example, no cash bail policies like they've done in Illinois, you know, to let criminals back out on the street while they're waiting to go to trial or doing like uh, what we have Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, who, as you know, is about to start a trial against um, Donald Trump. Remember, Alvin Bragg, when he came in, basically said, I'm not going to prosecute any misdemeanors. And he's refusing to prosecute about 50 percent of felonies in the city of New York. And look, I, I go to New York, um, you know, fairly often on business, and I can see the differences that that's uh, creating all all in a bad way in that city. And and you none of that's going to get fixed until you get uh, better people in office and you fund the police and you support the police. Yeah. One hundred percent. Hans von Spakovsky with us, a senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Um, so so you've said here that what Merrick Garland and his Justice Department is doing is an acknowledgement that that, you know, we have shovel by shovel dug our own grave, so to speak, sometimes figuratively, it seems, in allowing crime to run rampant in these blue cities. So right. I guess the acknowledgement of the problem is the first step. What what kind of effort is this criminal division violent crime initiative what should st louisans expect to see here that's going to look different than what it was before well i'm not really sure what uh what he thinks they can do other than getting the u.s attorney who's got jurisdiction over um st louis uh to try to do a better job of prosecuting crimes that are within the city that are within federal jurisdiction. And that's not that many local crimes. So, yeah, while, you know, maybe this is a good thing for St. Louis, overall, um, I, I don't think there's that much that uh, federal attorneys, which are the U.S. attorneys, uh, I, there's not that much they can do. Because, look, all kinds of l local crimes the huge increase in shoplifting, the huge increase in assaults, carjackings, all that kind of thing, those aren't federal crimes. So the feds, federal prosecutors can't really prosecute those cases. You know, Hans, I think about the very aggressive, violent crime that is everywhere in the area I'm in right now. Of course, I live in Illinois, so I hear a lot about what's going on in Chicago as well. And these are crimes that the Democrats previously did not want to prosecute. We'll see how things change here now that this initiative is put in place. But you mentioned, um, you know, New York, the amount of effort, taxpayer dollars, time that is being invested into trying to get Donald Trump. And crime is rampant right. there as well. So they are very selective on where they're applying the resources that are afforded to the offices of Alvin Bragg or Letitia James. Um, one of the things recently that has developed in this hush money case that is going to start here in just a couple weeks, less than a couple weeks, is the gag order on Donald Trump. I wonder if you could talk to us a little bit about that development and if it was an appropriate measure by the judge. No, I don't think it was an appropriate measure. The, the judge is um, a state court judge, Juan uh, Merchant, and he put a gag order on uh, Donald Trump after the DA's office claimed that Trump's rhetoric was dangerous and violent. Well, that's, that's absurd. What the judge is trying to gag is uh, or stop was the fact that um, Donald Trump was pointing out that the judge's daughter is a Democratic political consultant, among whose clients are Adam Schiff and apparently vi the vice president. <laughs> now, 
judges uh, under New York's ethics rules are supposed to not do anything that would uh, make uh, the, the public and others question their impartiality. How in the world can a judge oversee a case against Donald Trump when his daughter is a political consultant for Donald Trump's opposition candidate in the presidential race? Merchant should recuse himself. He should take himself entirely out of the case. But no, what does he do instead? Tells uh, Donald Trump that he can't talk about the fact that the judge's daughter uh, is a political consultant for the opposition political party. I I mean, it certainly does seem like it's applicable. And and Donald Trump being able to say it, if there's if there's a an opinion by Donald Trump on the matter, and he puts it out there in existence, it seems like the other people would have the right to counterpoint that opinion. Like, that seems to me like free speech is strengthened by more speech, but not not in this case. How do you how do you feel, though, this hush money case is going to play out? Is this going to be a long, drawn out process? I don't know if it will be, but I think once again, um, uh, Donald Trump faces the problem that he's in Manhattan and he's going to get a Manhattan jury. Uh, look, numerous experts on campaign finance law, including me, have said this is a bogus case. Um, he's being Trump is being charged uh, with uh, state law violations for supposedly violating federal law, <laughs> federal campaign finance law. But neither the Federal Election Commission nor the U.S. Justice Department, which are responsible for enforcing federal campaign finance law. And by by the way, I should say, I used to be a commissioner on the FEC. Mm -hmm. Both of those agencies said this is not a violation of federal law. So this is a bogus case from start to finish. But but the facts and the law aren't really going to matter in this case because it's a Manhattan jury and remember, Manhattan voted, what, 95 percent for Joe Biden in yeah. the last election? He he can't get an unbiased jury in Manhattan. Yeah. Well, he's it seems as though the case is it's just very ironic to me to compare the cases that are being brought against Donald Trump in the locations they're being brought against Donald Trump. That the only thing that seems to be at play there is that they could get a conviction in those specific locations. But then when we shift our eyes over to the well-meaning, forgetful uh, president of the United States, that the reason why we don't charge him anything is because we probably couldn't get Joe Biden convicted in the area where he would have to go to trial. It's uh, very unfortunate in my mind that committing a crime, the worthiness of that charge has to do with whether or not you think you can convince people to uh, actually bring those individuals to justice. And it seems as though there's a red and a blue way to do it. Well, no, unfortunately, you're true, which is why it's very clear that the American people are losing their faith in the American justice system. Hans, you are always shining a light on it, and we're grateful for you here on our show. Thanks for being with us once again. Sure, anytime. Sounds good. Bye-bye. Hans von Spikowski is a senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation, as you mentioned, the former FEC commissioner and a DOJ lawyer and author. Check out the books that he's written. Let's take a quick break. Wiggins America, when we come back, he's going to talk to us about being burned out. I think, you know, he's been back for what is it now? Five days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, Monday. he's all tuckered Friday. out. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to talk about taking a vacation, needing to put his feet up. Maybe he's maybe he refreshed. Maybe he feels refreshed and is excited to be back and is going to impart upon us the wisdom that he has gained. One of those two things will happen when we come back. Don't go away. This is the Annie Fry Show. Follow Annie on Twitter at Annie Fry Show. Air Comfort Service right now, it's a furnace day. I feel like probably through April, I'll just tell you what kind of day it is. It'd be easier if I was doing this earlier in the morning so that you could have the heads up. Today is a furnace day. It's in the low 40s. Nothing is going on outside today that you would want it to be warm and sunny for. Everything is right here, 2 to 3, on a furnace day. 
That is what you need to know and that Air Comfort Service will make sure that you are taken care of when the furnace isn't working the way it's supposed to be and you need to replace it. You can save up to $4,200 right now at Air Comfort Service with double carrier cool cash rebates on qualifying systems. They're probably thinking you're going to be looking more into the, the HVAC systems with the air conditioner unit at your home. Either way, furnaces, uh, air conditioner units. I've had the aero seal duct sealing in my house. They've replaced that HVA system at my house. I trust Air Comfort Service to give me the best opportunity to save money when you have to go through that unfortunate event of replacing a big apparatus like that in your home. Air Comfort Service will walk you through the whole process, give you the options that you need, and every avenue they can for wonderful financing opportunities and great uh, carrier cool cash rebates, which are double right now. Call them at 314-513-0091, 314-513-0091, and ask them how they can help you today. Make sure you tell them Annie sent you. Find them online at aircomfortservice.com. Hi, I'm Bob Kershaw with Retirement Advisory Group. Are you worried about market volatility in this election year? Are you concerned your money won't last you through retirement? Hi, I'm Tammy Kershaw, and as a family-owned business, we are committed to protecting your retirement, whether you're nearing retirement or already retired. We have a lot of folks that aren't aware of all the new investment choices that are available, which give you growth and protection from losses at the same time. Are you aware of all the fees that you are currently paying? We can show you how to avoid those fees. So come in now for your free retirement review and get a second opinion on your retirement plan. And just for coming in, you'll get a copy of our latest edition book, Your Key to a Worry-Free Retirement. Let us show you how to retire with confidence. We are proud to say we haven't lost a penny of our clients' money in 38 years, and we won't lose a penny of yours either. Let our family help your family. Call us now at 314-993-9494 or go online to retirementkey.com. That's retirementkey.com. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus a hundred bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year, even if you filed online. Hewitt, yeah! Ain't nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. On the battlefield, there's a saying America's military men and women live by. Never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Off the battlefield, Wounded Warrior Project operates with the same goal. Wounded Warrior Project was created to help our men and women returning home with the scars of war, whether those scars are physical or mental. Wounded Warrior Project, we never leave a fallen warrior behind, ever. Learn more about what we do at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Ready to turn your home into a digital racetrack? Buckle up for i3 Broadband's advanced whole home Wi-Fi. Picture this, lightning fast internet in every nook and cranny. No dead zones, no lag, just pure connectivity. Whether you're binge watching in the living room or video calling from the basement. All with no contracts, no hidden fees, just insane speeds. Plus our no risk 30 day money back guarantee. Hit us up at 877-976-0711 or zoom over to i3broadband.com slash SDL. We're local, reliable and turbocharging your internet life. More good news for Frederick Roofing. Voted best roofing company by the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. For a hole in your roof or a whole new roof, Frederick Roofing. 314-645-2000. The eclipse is on Monday. Will you be watching? Yes or no? Let us know if it's a part of your Monday plans. That is the Annie Fry YouTube live chat poll of the day. It is 1248. This time check is sponsored by Jerry Kelly Heating and Air Conditioning. It's time for a $98 AC tune-up. We're here to help you get registered to vote, whether you're in Missouri or Illinois. Democracy 2024 on 97.1 FM Talk. If you need help getting registered, go to 971talk.com slash vote. Reluctantly crouched at the starting line. Engines pumping and thumping in time. The green light flashes, the flags go up. Churning and burning, they yearn this for the is the they Annie Fry Show. And muscle for rank. Interact with Annie on Facebook. On an the tank. Annie Fry Ruthless Show. And while they pour through the turns, their prowess is potent and secretly stern. As they speed through the finish, the flags go down. The fans get up and they get out of town. The arena is empty, except for one man still driving and striving as fast as he can. The sun has gone down and the moon has come up. And long ago, somebody left with the cup. But he's driving. He's going the distance. 
Welcome back to the Annie Fry Show. Thanks for being with us this afternoon. Happy Thursday. It's Wiggins America time. Wiggins. Oh, Wiggins. Feeling burnt out? Oh, gosh, no. I feel fine. Okay. Well, that's not true. I still have weird jet lag, but I'm not burned out. I'm just tired. Worn out? I'm worn out. Uh, so this is for you guys. Okay. <laughs> Which one of us looks burnt out? Uh, I would say probably without looking at you, Brad. Okay. Good choice. <laughs> I'm just going to close my eyes, a safe spin bet. in a circle, and say, oh, I'm Brad. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So you guys are all burned out. I feel fine. So this is for you. Mm-hmm. Are you suffering from burnout? If you're feeling chronically stressed and exhausted, the answer could be yes. And they specifically say that burnout has to do with work. So it's not all of life. They're saying, are you burned out due to your job? So seek professional help. <laughs> yeah. Um, because what if you're burned out with life? I don't know. I, I don't know if there's a, a solution for that. I think you have to quit your job. Uh, the first one. Nice dairy-free sweatshirt. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I got these at a silent auction, and uh, I love these sweatshirts. They're very comfortable. How many do you have? Two. <laughs> <laughs> it was a basket with a dairy freeze coupon in it. Did you make money on the investment? I did. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, it was did a you? it was a forty dollar gift card or gift certificate, and the basket was only thirty eight. So yeah. not only did I make two dollars on ice cream, I got two sweatshirts for free. It's a dairy freeze if you know you know thing. Uh no, they're just a Collinsville place. I don't think they're. Wow, shots fired. Go no, on. I mean they're they're great. We go there all the time, but I don't think it's like a place that people pilgrimage to or anything. It's it's a that was your shot, man. You blew it. Great Collinsville location. We love it. We go there all the time. Um, we go they just know, crossed you off their promotion. No, list. no. <laughs> Let me tell you, we go there because a lot of the promotions they do, they cross promote with Cruda Bakery, mm-hmm. and so they'll do these cool like um, concretes that have Cruda gooey butter cake in them, for instance. Mm-hmm. And they do a lot of specialty stuff like that. Now, you and I probably would love, I, I love, I figure you would, Dole Whip. They do a lot of Dole Whip, too. So that's that. the two reasons. Well, I know that you like Dole Whip, though. Coconut Dole Whip. Oh, that's the stuff. That stuff is the stuff. Oh, man. <laughs> Dairy Freeze is like, don't know how to feel about this segment. I, <laughs> da- I contacted. Bakery, Paul, hi. Uh, they're pretty happy. I contacted uh, the owners of Dairy Freeze about coconut dole whip okay let me know man they said it's not true dole whip i don't care but it is good i don't i don't really <laughs> like regular dole whip so anyway uh how to deal with burnout one of the ways is to just eat more ice cream <laughs> <laughs> the second is to schedule according to you, yahoo news here schedule time for yourself annie yeah okay why aren't you doing this more <laughs> while it's no fun to find yourself overdrawn you can manage All your right. energy Bye. similarly <laughs> to how you do your finances <laughs> scheduling she's just walking out of the studio so if you don't hear her for a while it's because this is wiggins america and she's all burned out uh create a framework that facilitates productivity and safeguards against burnout annie oh she's coming back feel better i'm a clean (laughs) (laughs) it's funny because this is one of those things that you go yeah that actually would fix burnout love to do that you stupid yahoo (laughs) (laughs) it's kind of it's part of the problem yeah yeah. i can't do that exactly so we'll move on from that one because that one seems people need to understand about you know work i love what i do i don't work doesn't stress me out the, the only time work stress well that's not true sometimes work stresses me out but not with any frequency whatsoever like the work part of doing radio sometimes when the news gets super heavy specifically if it has to do with children that weighs on me when you have four kids and especially littler kids there is a point at the end of the day when you've kind of you know you've you've run the energy that you have you've done the things you need to do this is this is one of those things that as a mom is so incredibly conflicting when they just want to be on you and talk to you and ask you questions about every single all you are their hero you are the light of their life and they just want as much of you as they can possibly soak in and that will go away and then when it goes away you're not getting that back 
when you walk in the door after work and if they're home and they're like, mommy, and they run, you know, my, my kids still do that to me. My son doesn't. I wish he would. That'd be great. Um, when that's gone, it's gone. So you're constantly saying to yourself on the days where it's harder to give more of yourself, own it, love it. It's going to go away. Soak it in, bottle it up, save it for a rainy day. Uh, that is when I feel feel the most burnt out and then th this is something that I think women do that men don't do I think women do this more often than men you don't love it in that moment and then you feel guilt for not loving it in that moment no I hear you and that just goes <sighs> it's deflating yeah because you, you feel like you're failing all around and that's just on some days that's not every day but right it's just a lot Kenny D says working with Ryan probably stresses you out. That's inappropriate, Kenny. Uh, let's keep moving. Thanks for featuring that comment. You're welcome. It was very, very brief. Try this breathing technique, they okay. say. Focus on breathing box deeply breathing? through your nose. What's it called? I don't know. Is it box breathing? Box breathing? I don't see that name here. In four, hold four. Out four, hold four. Okay. So it says breathe in deeply through your nose. Breathe out slowly through your mouth. Is this something you've tried? Does it work? I try to do it to go to sleep when I can't sleep. Really? So it, there's something to it. I don't. That's I, what you're saying is just kind of measured breathing. Yeah. But uh, it also says put your hands on your belly and be aware of your hands moving up and down on with your, your own belly or yeah. just a belly. <laughs> just any belly, on a dog's belly if you have one. That's whatever. probably the best advice ever. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Pet a dog. Pet a uh, how about build exercise into your day? I think there's something to this one. I have a tough time with it. Yeah. But. I know you guys are pretty good at it, Brad. Actually, all of you guys are much better at it than I am. You guys are all pretty good at exercising Can you at least a that? few times What's a that? day. Can you clip that? Oh, yeah. Not the exercising part, just the... You're all better at it than I <laughs> am. <laughs> Look, I ruined your clip. <laughs> yeah, you ruined Not this one. The one. Not the first one. Uh, try a gratitude practice. Oh, Lord. Uh, incorporate <laughs> gratitude practices into your life by starting a daily gratitude journal. Hell no. <laughs> Uh, you don't have time for that? Ain't nobody got time if for that. If I had time for it, I wouldn't do it. A gratitude <laughs> journal. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good idea. Thank you, car. But <laughs> <laughs> Thank what you, is your, Rose. Is your car night Rider? It, your Does it car talk gets, back to you? No, it's that stupid thankfulness journal thing. Oh, People are like, gosh. make sure you thank all the stuff, and it's like, uh. Oh, I've never heard of that. Thank you, desk, for always being there for me yes. to set things on. <laughs> Be weird if it weren't. <laughs> And what would the desk do if you didn't thank it? Probably just start to collapse because it's made of particle board. No, the same thing it did if you did thank it. <laughs> Check in with your doctor is your last one. Make sure that your mental health issue is not a physical issue. That's good advice. It's all good advice. This has been a great segment. Great job, Ryan. Thank you. You went the distance. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with Tyrus. Judge Mike Carter here to talk to you about my news talk program, Justice in Journalism, with Judge Mike Carter. People ask, why is a judge a host of a news talk show? As a judge, I'm the neutral party that seeks to learn the truth and bring you the facts. Somewhere along the line, news shows lost that objectivity. Growing up, I can remember watching Walter Cronkite and knowing you could believe he didn't have a hidden agenda. Before I received my law degree and later became an elected judge for the past decade, I earned a master's degree in journalism at Mizzou, the very same journalism school Walter Cronkite attended. I was given a real appreciation for getting Getting to the truth, both as a judge and a journalist. Hence, the name of my show, Justice in Journalism, with me, Judge Mike Carter. Here I focus on local newsmakers, personalities, and Missouri officials like Governor Parson, Lieutenant Governor Kehoe, Secretary of State Ashcroft, Attorney General Bailey, and many more. Justice in Journalism with me, Judge Mike Carter, airs on Fox and ABC. You can also watch our past shows at MikeCarter.com, where we ask the questions and let you be the judge. If you'd like to see more of Judge Mike Carter's interviews on his program, Justice in Journalism, visit Mike Carter. Com. Stewart's American Mortgage and the Bagel Loan, a phone call or even a text message away, 314-324-4440, 314-324-4440. Reach out to Stewie and talk to him about the mortgage that you're going to get on the home that you're looking to buy. When you talk to him about a bagel loan, you're going to pay nothing in closing costs on that mortgage when you go through the process. And I think that for me, if you, I've bought two homes in my lifetime. And when you're going through that process, like the thing that sticks out to me is what house are we buying? And then after that, it's just sign here, sign here, sign here. And it's easy to kind of get in the motion of just going with whoever says, okay, this is the next place you're going to, and this is what you're going to do. Don't sleep on 
getting the right person to get your mortgage through because you can save thousands of dollars, especially with a bagel loan that is only at Stewart's American Mortgage. 314-324-4440. 314-324-4440. Google the bagel loan. And I'm LS number 226715. KFTK FM Florissant from the Under Law Injury Lawyers. Get Jim.com Studio 97.1 FM Talk. Always live on the free Odyssey app. An immediate ceasefire is essential on Lisa Brady, Fox News. That is part of what President Biden has just told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in their first phone call since an Israeli airstrike that killed seven aid workers in Gaza. Israel has called it tragic in a case of misidentification. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the president told Netanyahu a ceasefire is necessary to stabilize and improve the humanitarian situation and protect civilians. He made clear the need for Israel to announce a series of specific, concrete, and measurable steps to address civilian harm, humanitarian uh, suffering, and the safety of aid workers. Blinken says U.S. policy on Gaza will be determined by an assessment of Israel's immediate action. Meantime, Netanyahu, speaking at the start of an Israeli cabinet meeting, said Iran has been acting against Israel for years and that therefore Israel's working against Iran and its proxies, both defensively and offensively. He says they know how to defend themselves and that whoever hurts them or plans to, well, Israel will hurt them. Iran has blamed Israel for a strike that killed members of the Iran Iran's Revolutionary Guard earlier this week in Syria. A judge in Georgia refusing to dismiss the state's election interference case against former President Trump over a free speech argument. Attorneys for President Trump said basically Trump's questioning of potential voter fraud in Georgia was legitimate political speech and should be protected by the First Amendment. Judge McAfee just a short time ago saying even if it is political speech, it is not protected speech by the First Amendment if it furthers criminal activity. Fox's Steve Harrigan, that case has been sidelined for a few months while the former president and other defendants accused D.A. Fonnie Willis of misconduct. America is listening to Fox News. Waiting on a tax return? Hopefully it ends up in your hands. Fraudulent tax returns due to identity theft increased by 30% in 2023. If you're in a bind this tax season, LifeLock can help. Our U.S.-based restoration specialists are experts dedicated to helping solve your identity theft issues. And all LifeLock plans are backed by the Million Dollar Protection Package. So we'll reimburse you up to the limits of your plan if you lose money due to identity theft. Help protect your information this tax season with LifeLock. Save up to 25% your first year with promo code NEWS at LifeLock.com. Are you over 30 and putting off life insurance? It's time to get a quick quote from Ethos, a better, easier way to get term life insurance, all online with no medical exam. Answer a few health questions and you could be approved for up to $2 million. Isn't it worth 10 minutes to help protect your family's financial security? Ethos, up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at checkethos.com. That's checkethos.com. Air Comfort Service, heating, cooling, and insulation, weather. Chief Meteorologist Dave Murray. Windy and chilly times continue going through our Thursday afternoon. Clouds dominate a little bit of sunshine, 50 for the high. Tonight, a slow clearing process, a light freeze away from the city, 30 degrees. Sunshine on Friday, let's try to get it up to 55, 30 degrees again on Friday night. Then Saturday, sunshine in control, 60, some showers on Sunday. This is 97.1 FM Talk, Chief Meteorologist Dave Murray. Well, you just heard Dave Murray say that, yes, it is April, but it's only 50 degree high today. But the good news is spring is pretty much right around the corner. Let's just say that it's grilling season, because by the time we get to this weekend or maybe into next week, you're going to be using Andrea's sauce if you have any brains in you, because that stuff is fantastic. So whether you're outside or inside, uh, you got to get a bottle of Andrea's sauce. It is St. Louis famous, but it is internationally known. Deerbergs and Schnooks both carry it, so if you're walking down the aisles, you'll see it. But this time of year, you might see it on the end cap. You might see your butcher put it out on the counter because it is so good that they all know, yes, you can pick any cut of meat, but if you add Andrea's to it, it's going to be that much better, especially if you're not getting a great cut. I mean, you can make an average cut of meat into a great cut of meat by getting brush-on steak sauce 
from Andrea's. So go to Andrea's.com if you're not any, anywhere near any of those stores, and you can order a bottle right there, Andrea's.com. Are you ready to smell better naked? I'm Dr. Shannon Klingman, the OBGYN creator of Lumi, the whole body deodorant that's clinically proven to control odor for 72 hours on pits, feet, privates, and beyond. It's pH optimized to safely and effectively control odor anywhere you have it, but wish you didn't. Plus, it's proven to work better than a shower with soap alone. Whether you shower twice a day or three times a week, Lumi works better. And who doesn't want zero body odor? With over 200,000 five-star reviews, I'm so sure you're going to love it, or you can return it for free. There's a special offer for listeners. Use code 2222 and get 15% off your first purchase with code 2222, like the Lumi Starter Pack, Acidified Body Wash, or new Lumi Plus Sweat Control. That's L-U-M-E deodorant.com, code 2222 for 15% off your first purchase. Love it or return it for free. That's L-U-M-E deodorant.com, code 2222 to save 15% today. Don't miss the Mark Cox Morning Show Spring Bourbon Fling at Clayton Winehouse. Kim St. Ange here. Join Mark and me on Thursday, April 18th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. We'll try Proof and Wood, RD1, Four Roses, and more. Tickets are on sale now at 971talk.com slash events. Are you tired of feeling sick and tired? I'm Dr. Nick Barnes of Health From Within Family Chiropractic. Our simple five-step approach aligns your health naturally. We correct spinal abnormalities to maximize nerve supply, Focus on pure and simple nutrition, exercise and oxygen, mindset, and minimizing toxins in your body. Transform your health today with Health From Within, conveniently located on Manchester in Rock Hill or online at healthfromwithinstl.com. I can see clearly now thanks to the doctor's doctors at Ophthalmology Associates. Doctors Greg Birdie, Ranjan Maholtra, Robert Brusati, Andy Royer, and introducing Samuel Berry. You can too. Call 314-966-5000 or check out youreyedoc.com. That's youreyedoc.com. The Any Fry Show YouTube live chat poll of the day is sponsored by Ruler Foods. Low prices, no coupons. Ruler Foods. That is exactly what I needed to hear. Thank God someone here knows what you're talking about. That's us. That's right. Gotta love this American ride. All right, you need to take the time and get the full picture. Don't get me wrong. I love the ladies. I mean, they rev my engine, but they don't belong in the newsroom. It is Anchor Man, not Anchor Lady. What do you want from me? I'm not a married to For the sake, kid, keep your voice down. Your father's listening to the radio. I'm not a married to This is the Annie Fry Show. DEI. It means more fair hiring policies, new anti-discrimination rules for the workplace, and sensitivity training seminars. And the first thing it led to was a load of ads. Real progress on diversity and inclusion doesn't happen without real work. Say celebrate diversity into your X1 voice remote to discover curated content today. Every day, General Mills serves the world by making food people love. And inclusion is one of our secret ingredients. At Kraft Heinz, our purpose is to make life delicious. And we believe we can't achieve that without one essential ingredient, diversity. It's diversity that makes life delicious. We're on a 400-year-long journey, and scars don't fade. But neither does hope. Ask your doctor if black people are right for you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Nobody's buying Vaseline because of diversity. Come to think of it, I don't think I've ever actually bought Vaseline. It's just there. <laughs> like, it comes with the house. That's right? Charlemagne the God on, it's The Daily Show, right? That he was on there? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand Charlemagne the God. I, I don't think he's going to be a Trump voter. No. I don't know that he's going to turn into a Trump voter. I don't know that he's going to vote for Biden either. Honestly, listening to the way he talks. But he's talking about DEI. Everybody's talking about DEI right now. And I think that if you're willing to listen to what he has to say about DEI, it's insightful. Now, it doesn't mean that at the end of this, you're going to go, I agree with everything he said. But I wonder if you agree with something. So that's how things stood in 2020, but that was like 15 years ago. Today, when people talk about DEI, it's more likely to sound like this. 
DEI is just a rebranded version of uh, uh, hating white people. DEI, in this case, stands for divisive, erroneous, and insidious. DEI, which stands for didn't earn it. Discrimination, exclusion, and indoctrination. <laughs> DEI. DEI stands for Dr. Dre, Easy E, and Ice Cube. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all cheering out there, but do you want with attitude coming to your office? <laughs> These right-wingers are crazy, right? But here's the part where you all stop applauding everything I say. The truth about DEI is that although it's well-intentioned, it's mostly garbage, okay? It's kind of like the Black Little Mermaid. Just because racists hate it doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> And you know I'm right, because every one of you has sat through one of those diversity training sessions and thought, this is some <laughs> And it's not just you. Over 900 studies have shown that DEI programs don't make the workplace better for minorities. In fact, it can actually make things worse because of the backlash effect. Remember Dare from school? Y'all remember Dare? Yeah. <laughs> she said, woo. De <laughs> DEI training is like Dare for racism. And... <laughs> And you all know how effective that was. I was sitting there going, oh, shit, there's a ton of fun drugs I should try. <laughs> I didn't even know about Molly. Thanks, Officer John. Char Charlemagne the God talking about DEI. In, two, in those two separate clips, he first mocks. I, one of them was like Heinz. This is like your ketchup with diversity. Have you ever seen green ketchup? Yes. Barf. Gross. Like, don't put that ish anywhere near anything <laughs> no. that I'm eating. I, 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 and, you know, like, the, the irony of it is, is ketchup really that red? No. With? No, that's dye. Yeah, it's, it's the choice of the color. I don't want it to be green, but I also don't need... I don't need to feel virtuous when I enter into this partnership with the ketchup. That, yeah, I'm putting on my hot dog, okay? Just leave me alone. Ketchup goes on a hot dog. Listen to more from Charlie. But the biggest failure of DEI is that the number of black people in power at big companies is basically the same as it was five years ago. In fact, maybe the only thing that DEI has accomplished is giving racist white people cover to be openly racist. DEI breeds complacency, Dana, and complacency kills. We're going to have doctors who don't know how to perform heart surgery, and we're going to have uh, planes that are falling out of the sky. Boeing recently bragged not about being the best in the business, but about surpassing its diversity quotas. Oh, goody. But then, not so good, a door flying off one of Boeing's 737 Supermaxes. I'm sorry. If I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. I mean, honestly, when I see a black pilot, I'm not worried that we're going to crash. I'm worried that we're going to get pulled over. <laughs> okay? That's right. That's right. That's right. And, and no, officer, I will not step out of this vehicle. So, All right? you have Charlemagne the God here at The Daily Show, and he's, he's entering this concept of... He's saying DEI in and of itself at the beginning. He's saying, like, when you see Heinz and Vaseline and the other commercial enterprises that are, their, their whole commercial is they're telling you that this is a company that believes in diversity. Don't think for a second that they're still not selling you on something, that they're not trying to put virtue out there on the TV screen for you to know that when I buy Vaseline, I'm buying virtue. That's, that's really the idea that Charlemagne is getting to. And of course he's doing it in a way that is critical of people who are critical of DEI. But actually I think it's important that somebody from the left is there also criticizing the virtue signal that DEI has become for corporations around the globe. You're becoming like my most stable relationship. Enough said. Tyrus, welcome back to the Any Fry Show. It's good to have you here. Always a pleasure. I don't know if you were able to hear Charlemagne the God's full intro there on The Daily Show. There's a couple more clips I haven't gotten to yet. But he, he is critical. He's critical of Fox News, which is an easy cheap shot for the, for the Daily Show and for Charlemagne. But he's also calling out these companies for taking DEI and making it a way to sell consumers on how good these companies are. I'm wondering where you are on the DEI initiative and how long you think this country is going to continue to sustain it? Well, first of all, I, I don't look to Charlemagne as the say-it-all, be-it-all for advice. He, he, uh, 
walks a thin line because he still has to appease the group that pays him and puts him on. So when he's not there, you see how comfortable he is when he has to backtrack everything he says about Biden and stuff. Mm. Uh, I hope he gets to a point where uh, the paychecks from the big things don't mean as much as saying what he wants to say. Yeah. Because he's back and forth all the time, and that's because he's trying to appease both sides. So, and that never usually works. But you know, him do him. I don't like. I said I don't listen to him. I don't watch him. So, uh, and the stuff I have seen, it just seems like he'll just say whatever's there for whom's on the thing. So. Yeah, that, that's possible. And, yeah, maybe that's just how it is. It's just how he flows on stuff. One feels back and forth. Fine. Whatever. That's how he pays his bills. None of my business. But I don't look to him for advice. Do you, uh, do you feel like DEI is, is being I, used? I think it's like, here's the thing. You put people, unqualified people of color in, they're not doing a great job, or worse, they become corrupt. Um, the people who had issues uh, with minorities now have a legitimate gripe, um, saying, well, look, you know, and then for us, instead of it's our best and brightest, it's which one of us ticks enough boxes for the person or they or the virtue signaler who's giving them the job and they're not doing a job at a high level. Or when, what we're seeing is that when the people uh, vote and get them in the office, they immediately start doing things that, you know, they fall in line. Listen, and we know corruption in politics is not a, a black thing or a white thing. It seems to be everybody who's a politician thing uh, with very little uh, exceptions to the rule. It's just uh, when they get caught, it gets publicized. And um, it's it's embarrassing. So it's like you kind of I, I said I was on American Newsroom today. It's like every time I hear about corruption with mayors and stuff, I start grabbing my face because I'm like, hope they're not black. And it turns out when they are, because it's like you get you still we still have this grouping problem in this country uh, because the people who get in trouble, the first thing they do is say it's because they're black, not because they're not doing their job or uh, they get caught doing something they're not supposed to be doing. So then they play the race card. You know, or the, or the gay card, or whatever the card is that got them the job. It's also the job that can they can use it whenever someone's critical of them. Whereas a white man in the job can get tore up all day by people uh, with no consequences, and even though they don't even have facts or truths or anything. Because right now, uh, it's okay to be racist to to white people. So it's just, and it's not okay. You know, and the fact that we're still stuck on this identity politics crap. If someone's bad at their job, their skin color has nothing to do with it. Yeah. So yeah. You should just, everyone should be judged on merit and character. But the side that claims they're not the most doesn't want anything to do with it. Mm. You know, so I think it's po- a, politics it's a, it's really. It's a really confusing, stupid time in terms of <laughs> if you give them what they want, they don't want it. And if you question them on their work ethic, then you're, you're just racist. So you can't, you can't argue or debate with that. Yeah. Politics fans the flames of all of this, of course, but I don't know if they set the fire to begin with because I think you have to find the source of the problem in order to correct the problem. And I, I'm not a believer in like elect the right man or woman on election day and our problems will be solved. I mean, that's like when you get the opportunity to start solving problems. That's not when the problem is solved in and of itself. I'm wondering you where vote. you think that that problem, where's the problem solution start? Oh, the biggest problem is, is that everyone votes like they're voting for their favorite team. And you need to vote for what's best for you and your family. And that's number one. So which means you need to really educate yourself to the political process. Look how it affects your taxes. Look how it affects your neighborhood. It's not just watching and having a bunch of talking points. Uh, if you're if you're right leaning, saying everything on the left is wrong, and if you're left leaning, everything on the right is wrong. Uh, you're not you know not much is ever going to get accomplished. People just vote in their team, and it, no, the needle doesn't move. And that's that's a problem. Uh, we're not voting based on uh, deeds. We're voting on sound bites and, and being called like, you know, someone on the news says a guy's this and that. Now they're using AI to take bits and pieces of what people say and try to make it into a statement, as we saw what, what happened with uh, President Trump this weekend when he was referring to the individuals uh, that shot the police officer as an animal and a yeah. uh, woman that was killed. They are animals. I'll say it too. The individuals that committed those crimes animals the ones it's funny because he's not grouping he's talking about the individuals but they come back with grouping you can't talk about any of them you can't say anything you know you can't say illegal aliens or what i call invaders uh, now it's called newcomers so it's the <laughs> it's, it's them because what it is is they don't want individual achievement that's what is under attack that's why they're taking away 
programs at schools. This administration is, is a socialist administration. I don't understand. And if, for those of us who don't like socialism, we're going to hate this administration and their policies. Those Americans who feel socialism and the idea of the best guy wins, or if you work your butt off and get to a certain point uh, with this administration, they want to get you. They want you to give it back. Do it's okay for them to sit on top of their world, but it's not okay for for an individual. And you know, one last thing, because I know I'm going on here, but it's such a passionate subject, is uh, the idea that when, uh, especially with black men and white men, when you become independent businessman or whomever, or your path took you to where you're on Fox News and you're your own boss and you're doing your own thing, the first thing they want to do is tell you that you're you're not black or you're not a man or you're not, you're a toxic monster the the idea of individual achievement and women are so far under attack and the cold part is these women groups aren't standing by them it's the toxic alpha males that you want to get rid of so bad turned out to be the feminists because we're the ones saying no this isn't right so it's the it's a this they call it progressives or whatever I want but it's a socialist marxist mindset and of course the average American who is in that fight of capitalism and trying to raise his 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 life to where America is the only place where you can go from uh, living in uh, poor shallow means and build yourself up three or four uh, brackets in a jury. Look at Charles Payne. Look yeah. at what he did. He was literally sharing a room with his mom and his, I think his brother in in New York, and he's worked his ass off to get where he's at, and you want to take it away from him? Like, it's just, it, it's ridiculous to me. Any any for any family that has pulled up their bootstraps and, and walked through the, the muck and mire to fight up this country, whether you're discriminated against because the way you look, the way you talk, or whatever the case may be, the boundaries that get put in front of us, the hurdles, and they walk through that, and they get to a point, and then now you have administration saying, oh, no, 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 we don't want individual achievement. We're all the same. We all share the same, except the ones who are pulling the strings are the ones who got to make the money. So, do you feel like uh, the Biden administration is doing is failing in enough areas to make people consider generational habitual voting patterns? We, those of us who believe in capitalism and uh, the Second Amendment and the First Amendment and the Fourteenth Amendment, and we we want just to be left alone and seek our American dream experience without the federal government involved in everything. Uh, we hate this, but you have to. We have to understand that there is half the country, or a little less than half the country, that is fine with the Bidens uh, and the progressive uh, policies, and that's the issue. That's why it's such a big divide. Is we have socialism versus capitalism is the best way, I think, right now in terms of uh, the Republican Party with President Trump. That will continue. Uh, if Biden goes, then this socialist agenda will continue, and just. We're going to if we don't if it doesn't go to the capitalist side, we're going to have to adjust and, and figure it out. But uh, that's basically what it is. And they're and they disguise that by attacking anybody who calls it. So I'm sure by the time this interview is done, uh, I'll be uh, sexist, <laughs> racist, you know, all the things that go with it for just saying straight up what it is. It's they don't want accountability. That's why they don't want people going to jail. Uh, they want everyone to be able to do whatever the hell they want with no consequences. And uh, that has never really worked out in any society. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you each week. And I, I must commend you on your five and two Boston Red Sox. They're doing great. Listen. Yeah, listen, listen. <laughs> we won the first two games, and I was like, yep, here goes the season. Oh, no. And what do we do? What do we do against Seattle? With the I hate the ghost runner, by the way. I hate it. Mm, I just hear um, Little League crap. So you're up there. You got a chance to beat Seattle, be up three nothing. And what do you do? You bring the rookie up to end the game, who's never played in the majors before. Here, kid. Baptism by fire. Like, as if we've got as yeah. But here's the deal: every game is a must win for the Red Sox. Yeah. Every game is must win. So uh, the that once that happened, I said, okay, no problem. I'm winning this bet easy. Hmm. We're five and two now. I'll, I'll talk to you next week when we're when we're five and seven. Okay, I, I don't think it's going to be that way. I need to know what your hat size is, Tyrus. Eight. 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 <laughs> got it. Uh, and your hat size is going to be eight. I want it to be big. Enough. <laughs> That's good. I got a lot of hair, so I can put it all yeah. up under yeah. there. All right, yeah. Tyrus. Thanks for being Enjoy with us. That.
<laughs> well, Always a pleasure. Talk to you again next week. Bye. Uh, good to have Tyrus on. He's a regular and Gutfeld, of course, Fox News contributor. He's got a lot of things in the hopper right now. He hosts Maintaining with Tyrus on Outkick, and he also has a stand-up special on Fox Nation. There's a ton of good stuff on Fox Nation. I highly encourage you to check it out if you haven't yet. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, the YouTube live chat poll for today, will you be watching Monday's Eclipse? Yes or no? I don't know how we answer this question here on this show because the eclipse is rudely happening in the middle of our show just like everything else is happening in the middle of the show. But we are incredibly grateful for you spending some of your afternoon with us. So go to the YouTube live chat poll. Come say hi to us. There's literally nobody else in this building right now. We want to hang out with you. Join us on the Annie Fry YouTube channel. Say hello and let us know if you're going to watch that eclipse on Monday. And tell us if you're traveling somewhere. We'd like to know where the hot spots are. We'll be right back. Don't go away. No love, no love you call Rio. This is the Got Annie Fry nobody. Show. The Annie Fry Show is streaming online. Watch us live on YouTube and subscribe. The Retirement Advisory Group is a phone call away at 314-993-9494. When you call the Retirement Advisory Group, because you're right there on the cusp of retirement. You know that you probably need to make some moves before you just stop going to work. How are you going to get paid? You've saved. You have prepared. But when you transition into retirement, you need to have a new plan. And that plan can come from the Retirement Advisory Group. 314-993-9494. Call them. Set up a free sit-down conversation. There's no obligation when you walk out the door. If it's not for you, that's fine. But sit down and listen to Thomas Helbig, Bob Kershaw, Tammy Kershaw, discuss with you your retirement and how the Retirement Advisory Group can help make sure that your needs are met, that your worry-free retirement is right around the corner, and that you understand what is ahead of you so that you can enjoy those last few days, years, whatever it might be, months, before you actually move into retirement. Call them at 314-993-9494 and schedule your appointment today and tell them the Annie Fry Show sent you as well. You can find them online right now at retirementkey.com. You know, most people never get to sit down with elected officials and ask them about the important issues. I'm Judge Mike Carter, and that's exactly why I host the news talk program, Justice and Journalism, with me, Judge Mike Carter. My goal is to bring those who represent us closer to the people they serve. I ask the questions you would in a no-nonsense manner. That's why we've been able to interview so many top local, state, and federal officials, because as a judge, I offer an unbiased, one-on-one -on -one conversation that's hard to find elsewhere these days. Besides serving as judge, I have a journalism degree, which is how the name of the show, Justice and Journalism, journalism with me judge mike carter evolved you never know who will interview next from governor parson to prosecutors sports figures to missouri business leaders justice and journalism with me judge mike carter airs on fox and abc you can also watch our past shows at mikecarter.com where we ask the questions and let you be the judge if you'd like to see more of judge mike carter's interviews on his program justice and journalism visit mikecarter.com that's mikecarter.com do you owe $10,000 or more in credit card debt or personal loans? With credit card debt at all-time highs, Debt Relief Advocates is urgently notifying consumers of debt relief now being made available designed to aid consumers with out-of-control credit card debt. Those who qualify and enroll for this relief program will only have to pay back a fraction of what they owe. This is not bankruptcy or a debt consolidation loan. This is a relief program that credit card companies would rather you not know about as it ends your debt nightmare and saves you lots of money. Consumers owing at least $10,000 in credit card debt or personal loans can now take advantage of this debt relief as the cost of living skyrockets. Debt Relief Advocates has established a relief hotline for you to call to learn what debt reduction you may qualify for, so don't wait. For this free information, call the Relief Hotline at 800-515-5751. 800-515-5751. 800-515-5751. Well, there's a very good chance as you've driven down your street, you have uh, admired houses in your neighborhood that, that have been covered in Rhino Shield, and you don't even know it, uh, except if you pay close attention, you'll notice that they're not being repainted every couple of years. Uh, what I mean is same bright, vivid colors that you would choose with regular paint, except that Rhino Shield lasts and you're going to get a 25 year warranty with it. I've got it on my house and I mean it. It looks like it did the day they put it on. It lasts and lasts. 
it's lab tested to last that long against chipping or peeling or cracking. And they put this on businesses as well. Condo units from Springfield, Illinois, all the way down to the Lake of the Ozarks. You can find it. And my friend Darren will be happy to come over and give you a free evaluation of your home. All you have to do is call him. Tell him you heard Mark Cox talking about it. 877-25-RHINO or online at 877-25rhino.com. You're listening to The Annie Fry Show live from the Air Comfort Service Heating, Cooling, and Insulation Studio. Get in your comfort zone with double carrier cool cash rebates up to $4,200 and 0% financing for up to 72 months on a new HVAC system. For details and a free estimate, visit aircomfortservice.com. The Mark Reardon Show. Brian Kilmeade. You say, we don't play above our heads. It's going to be a bloodbath on the court. They're not going to knife each other. It's going to be bad if we don't control China's imports of electric vehicles. It's going to be bad. Weekdays from 3 to 6. St. Louis is home for conservative talk. Would you like to swing on a star? This Harry is the Annie Fry Show. And Follow Annie on Twitter. At Annie Fry Show. Or would you rather be a mule? A mule what was that show called? With long, this one. Oh, uh, Another with world? Evie. No. Out of this world. Out of, Out this, of world. this world. She could stop time. I loved that show. Yeah, me too. It was a huge show at the time. Put her two fingers together. What did. Oh, Zach Morris just did a timeout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not complicated. There, there wasn't some sort of sci-fi reason that he could do that. But it was just, just it was just breaking was breaking the, fourth, the wall. Yeah, breaking the fourth wall. It's funny to go back and watch Saved by the Bell when he would do something like that, and you realize that they couldn't like freeze the shot behind it. Everyone just had to pretend. Everybody just got <laughs> yeah, kind of stopped. Yeah, yeah. you could still see him breathing. Do you know what that looks like to like my 14 year old and 11 year old kid? Like, what are they doing? <laughs> oh, like not stopping the, the actual screen, you like mean? just how old that looks. That might as well hmm. not even be in color. Mm, wow. I, I, no, I don't know what that looks like to a 14-year-old. Have you seen the YouTube Zach Morris is awful or something like that? No, I haven't. It basically boils down every Saved by the Bell episode into how terrible of a person Zach Morris is. <laughs> and when you go back and you think about like all, like all he ever did was scheme and lie yeah. and manipulate. But it always wrapped up with music at the end, so it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Um, I love Saved by the Bell. I was raised on Saved by the Bell. I don't hate Zach Morris. I think he's like the cutest person in the history of time. But they had a point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, that was terrible. When you put it that way, <laughs> it's like, this is not exactly uh, how I saw it. My, my little 10 and 12-year-old eyes ended up seeing it. We just got done speaking with Tyrus, and I was talk- I went into the beginning of this, the last segment playing some of these clips from Charlemagne the God, and um, he is talking about DEI, and the first clip that I played was him bringing DEI into the topic of conversation, and he's playing clips from commercials that are like one, of, I think it was the Heinz one, which one was like, one of our ingredients is diversity. Oh, I don't even remember, because that all when I remember seeing that, all I saw was the letters delicious written up on the screen. Yeah, and they're then diversity. And, and you know, you, you have these huge corporations, and they're adding in DEI, but they're making sure that they tell you about it. They're not just, they're not just implementing it because it's the, quote, right thing to do. Why is it so pertinent that these individuals make sure that you understand exactly what it is they're well, doing? Well, yeah, they're blaming DEI for everything, even that bridge in Baltimore. They called Baltimore's mayor the DEI mayor, like he was given the job for being black. Then they said the shipping company was too focused on DEI instead of safety. But almost the entire leadership of the company is white. <laughs> no black people, right? If anything, the Baltimore mayor, he should have been the one to make it racist. Just come out like, these crackers knocked down my bridge. OK? All right? And one of y'all crackers better pay for it. OK? <laughs> So they have Charlemagne there reacting to some of the clips that we played where they, they have a montage of Fox News talking about DEI. Didn't earn it is what one of them says. There's the famous Charlie Kirk comment where Charlie Kirk says that if Charlie Kirk sees a black pilot, he's going to internally ask himself, Charlie, did this this pilot, does, does he know what he's doing, essentially? So, I mean, there are inflammatory things that are being said 
on the right about the circumstance, but you still have to ask yourself about the merits of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I am always asking myself, what is it about the implementation of these things that is so important for you to tell us you're doing it? Shouldn't we just see that you're doing it? Shouldn't it just be apparent to us that you are a company that invests in people for who the best person for any particular job is and not some, something where you're looking at essentially like a quota base? The DEI initiative is a tool that is being used by companies to sell you more of what that company manufactures. That service, that good, whatever the consumable is from corporate America, the marrying of DEI into their, their, their structure, the reason why it's being pushed in front of you so much is because in many cases, these corporations believe it to be a very lucrative marketing tool. And I think that it's important that you have to understand, this is kind of like what I was talking about in the first hour, Brad, with you about green energy. Like the idea of pursuing green energy is a worthy cause. Right. We never got to where we are right now without people taking wild stabs at things that were very expensive, figuring out how to do it, and then figuring out how to make it replica replicatable on a mass scale. Yeah. That just made me think of, Remember when in the State of the Union, Joe Biden said we had a cancer vaccine? Yeah. Yeah. It was great news. I was very excited about that. Where is that? Oh, you want follow through. No, I don't want to wait until next he said we January, February, or March to talk about the cancer vaccine. Good grief. But, I mean, there are people working on cancer vaccines right yes. now. There are people who are, who are developing that. It's a very expensive process. We could talk about the merits of big pharma and all of that. But you do have to invest to have these innovations. And the, the problem is, this is what I was saying in the first hour, when politically the left tries to, to marry your virtue with whether or not you support and are willing to sacrifice to whatever extent the poli the politicos tell you on the left that you have to when it comes to green energy. And then you find out they're making a crap ton of money on the process. You follow the money. You can always follow the money. The money and the power. Here's more from Charlamagne. And honestly, uh, I'm not surprised these programs didn't work. And here's why. It's just corporate PR. They want good vibes. And also, they want to cover their <laughs> okay? <laughs> Did you know that if a company gets sued for civil rights violations, just having a DEI program will be counted as evidence in their favor, even if the program doesn't do okay? It's the I have a black friend of the legal system, <laughs> right? We don't need corporate DEI. Yes, we want diversity and equity and inclusion, but we don't want it from Vaseline. <laughs> Although I'm not going to front, Vaseline has been there for the black community. Respect, okay? <laughs> right? That's right. Moisturize. Okay. Do you hear what he's saying there? This is a really important point. Mm -hmm. And knowing that it's coming from Charlemagne, I think is valuable. This means that there are people on the left and on the right who can see what they're trying to do here, which is to virtue signal, not to be virtuous. There's to so many of these political endeavors, the right will do it too on various things. You can't just tell people about, come see how good I look and not be looking good when you start to dig into it. And Charlemagne's point there that if somebody within an organization is accused of some sort of nefarious behavior that might have some sort of racist tendency or some sort of um, non-diversity um, acknowledging problem and it's looked into, they can say, Oh, we do have a DEI program. And like that is qualification enough in some possible in some circumstances to not take that situation seriously. What we have here is a problem that I think that the left understands and I think that the right understands. I can say this on a conservative talk radio show that of course we've been a white male dominated country for the for for the larger percentage of time that the United States of America has existed, but how could we possibly 
not look at the actual history and bloodshed in this country to bring the opportunities to the forefront for a diverse group of people in a way that no other country, especially not one that is young as ours has, attempted to do and succeeded in doing so. Like the actual virtue of the United States of America is something to really celebrate and be proud of that we have been able to grow from being such a young experiment into what we have successfully been right now, in many cases on the backs of people who were put in a position to thrust the success of this country forward because of their skin color. We would not have been such a successful, growing, booming country if slavery would not have been implemented when it was. It was free labor. And our country still said, we have to stop it. This isn't right. We'll die over it. I think that's virtuous. To be able to look at people and say, this isn't right. It has to stop. And that doesn't mean that upon the the conclusion of the Civil War and an Emancipation Proclamation and all of that, that the job is done because then you had to fight the Southern Democrats who wanted to do everything in their power to make sure that separate but equal, to try to put the qualifications, the Southern Democrats, the Democrat Party, to try to put all of these systems around voting to make sure that blacks were still isolated from the mix. We don't even have to talk about women yet. All, and you get to the point where you're in 2024, and historically this is not something that is being taught the way it's supposed to be. It's certainly not understood on a widespread level the way it should be. All of the talk, all of the criticism that we hear about showing identification to vote, any sort of barrier that exists between a piece of paper existing in the hands of somebody and getting to the place where it's being counted, every single barrier that you put in front of somebody to get that vote counted, every single barrier that the Democrat Party is saying that the Republican Party is trying to disenfranchise people from, the Democrat Party of 2024 is trying to benefit from the policies that were put in place by the Democrats post-Civil War when the Democrats wanted to discount, marginalize, and minimize the value of black people in this country who had been freed from slavery by people who were of a free-thinking mind in the North led by Abraham Lincoln, a Republican. It's so strange how all of these things, you you look look at it on a timeline and you understand history, and you ask yourself, how do we get here? How do we get to the place where we need to have such a huge initiative put into all the biggest corporations and the smallest businesses, anywhere that we can fit a DEI initiative in, we need to get it in there. What is so important about the idea the absence of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then when you look at the places where many of the people who DEI is put into place to help and the people who are pushing and funding these DEI initiatives, you look at the places that they run, like St. Louis and Chicago, and you see the Justice Department acknowledging that these are not safe places to be. And you see initiatives like we talked about yesterday about investing in businesses, trying to get people to come back downtown and reinvigorate business here. These are all admissions that the way we have been doing things isn't working. And the same people who are trying to push DEI are doing it in a way that is making it a commodity that they can then sell to you. You purchase Heinz ketchup, you're going to understand, well, I should feel good about myself when I take that ketchup out of my refrigerator and dip my french fries into it. Because Heinz stands for diversity. Nobody's thinking that. But for some reason, Heinz still feels the need to spend money on advertising it. It's because they're selling it to you. They're selling you virtue. And if they didn't think that it was going to help their bottom line, they wouldn't do it. The question is, are they actually being virtuous? And when you listen to Charlemagne explain here how 
You don't really need Vaseline to be the one who reinforces diversity, equity, and inclusion to you. You got to ask yourself why they're taking the time to do it. Here's how he wraps Look, it. man, uh, real DEI is only going to come from black leadership. I don't know how to do it because I'm not a black leader. But I do know how to tell if it's working. Just keep an eye on right-wing media. The more they're freaking out, the more progress we're making. I, I think it's an interesting point that Charlemagne makes there. Because if it just looks like we're freaking out, I'm not scared to be in a diverse environment. And I would consider anybody who would walk into a room or a conversation with me as an equal, I would never look at somebody across a, a boardroom table or something and think of them as being unequal because of how they look or the gender that they are. We actually have to invest in the real virtue of inclusion. And it should be apparent on its, on its own surface without having to be marketed. The more they market it, the more they try to force feed it to you, the less I believe that the efforts and the virtue that they're really investing in in the company, that you can see the merits of it without them having to sell you that message. I think Charlemagne's criticism of DEI here, it looks and sounds different than the right's criticism of DEI, but it's criticism nonetheless, less because he could see what they're doing. The right can see what they're doing. Again, identify the same problem, different solutions. But I thought that it was an interesting take on something that, you know, the ultimate point here is that DEI isn't really what it needs to be. I think that's something that we agree on. And of course, as a, as a white woman myself, I'm going to see DEI in one lens as a black man. I'm sure Charlemagne sees it as a different one and propose to understand what it looks like from him. I don't think he could propose to understand what it looks like from my angle. We should get to the point where we're actually concerned about real virtue, real culture, and how it manifests itself on our day-to-day -day basis, not just in a 30-second commercial that some corporation plays to tell you we're one of the good ones. If you got to tell me that and I can't see it on my own, I think you got a different problem to solve. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about that YouTube live chat poll. Will you be watching Monday's Eclipse? Do we have any ideas? I mean, I mean there's the roof here. This eclipse is happening in the middle of the show. Uh, the ideas are probably us looking out that window or going on the roof or I go somewhere like the middle of Illinois. Ryan, I hate to tell you this, but you might be on the board and we might be looking at the eclipse on this oh, one. Oh, I never thought about it that direction. Yeah, I know. We'll put a little black circle in front of this light up here and we'll just pretend. <laughs> I won't know the difference. <laughs> we'll be right back. Don't go away. You may grow up to be a pig. This is the Annie Fry Show. To swing on a star. Interact with Annie on Facebook. The Annie Fry Show. And be better off than you are. Or would you rather be a fish? Michael's Flooring Outlet online at igotfloored.com. Flooring shopping made simple because you can trust the people you're shopping from. That matters. When you are replacing the hardwood flooring in your house or maybe installing something beautiful in that newly finished basement, maybe the Mohawk Smart Strand carpet line that's going to offer you the superior performance that you need for the fun and the playing and the celebrating that's going to take place in that basement. you got to TV on the wall and you're going to be watching the big game, whatever it might be. When you go to Michael's Flooring Outlet, you're shopping at a local business that has been serving the people of St. Louis, greater St. Louis area for almost 30 years. And they know how to do it. They know how to pair value and quality and to help you guide, be guided along this process because you kind of have an idea what you want. You know the look that maybe you are trying to achieve. But especially when it comes to hardwood flooring, there's a lot of different ways that you can achieve that look. Some of them stand the test of time more than others. Some need more maintenance than others. You need to know that information when you're making your investment. And Michael's Flooring Outlet is there to guide you through the whole process. You can shop at any of their three in-store locations or just go online to igotfloored.com. Mike Carter here of Carter Law Offices. You know, as an attorney, I make my way across the great state of Missouri on a pretty regular basis. And from the rivers to the lakes and the Ozark Mountains, it's really just a pleasure to travel across the great state of Missouri. And, you know, not to mention, we have the best sports team and the best cities and the friendliest small towns in America, it seems like. And Carter Law Offices wants to make sure Missouri's story gets out far and wide about our excellent business climate, our exceptional workforce. You'll hear more from me soon, Mike Carter. Visit MikeCarter.com to see Mike's interviews with all of Missouri's elected leaders. 
Mike Carter here of Carter Law Offices. You know, as an attorney, I make my way across the great state of Missouri on a pretty regular basis. And from the rivers to the lakes and the Ozark Mountains and the richest farmland around, it's really just a pleasure to travel across the great state of Missouri. And, you know, not to mention, we have the best sports team and the best cities and the friendliest small towns in America, it seems like. And Carter Law Offices wants to make sure Missouri's story gets out far and wide about our excellent business climate, our exceptional workforce. You'll hear more from me soon, Mike Carter. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. Have you scheduled your maintenance for your air conditioner for the summer to assure you and your loved ones that you will have cooling this year? If you have not, definitely do it. This is a great time to start while you're listening to me right now instead of calling me when it's 100 degrees outside and your air conditioner is not working or it goes down and you say, you know, I forgot to call Bart. It's really affordable. I mean, considering what, uh, as far as groceries, it's about a, it's about the cost of a loaf of bread, eighty nine dollars. So, uh, <laughs> call me, Spart Inman, one easy number in Missouri and Illinois, and the only number three one four two nine three twenty six hundred. Again, three one four two nine three twenty six hundred or Bart Inman dot com. That's Bart with a B Inman with an I. Dot com. At Neovitin, we are all about supporting your nutrition, and that's why we are excited about our new Neovitin Omega-3 supplement. Neovitin Omega-3 is formulated with 1,200 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids to help support healthy hearts. Our high-quality omega-3 fish oils are sourced from wild-caught fish and tested for heavy metals. With our convenient monthly subscription, you can get Neovitin Omega-3 delivered right to your door every month with no long-term obligations. Support your daily nutrition and sign up for a Neovitin Omega-3 subscription at neovitin.com today. Hey, it's Mark Reardon. If you're nearing retirement or already retired, call my friends Thomas Helbig and Bob Kershaw with the Retirement Advisory Group. They'll show you how linking to the market is much safer than owning the market for your retirement savings. They're the official financial advisors of my show. Go to retirementkey.com. Well, you heard about that eclipse? If you haven't, man, have you been out of the loop. Will you be watching Monday's Eclipse? That's the subject of our Annie Fry Show YouTube live chat poll. Yes or no, simple question, will you be watching Monday's Eclipse? Let us know. We'll talk about it at the end of the show and give you the results. I bet you're among, eh, I'm not going to make any predictions. We'll wait. 151, this time check is sponsored by Jerry Kelly, Heating and Air Conditioning. It's time for a $98 AC tune-up. Jerrykelly.com. Shows that make a difference. Mark Cox, Brian Kilmeade, Annie Fry, Mark Reardon and Dana Lash, Heidi Harris, Wiggins America. Where St. Louis comes to talk. 97.1 FM Talk. This is the Annie Fry Show. Follow Turn Annie wire, on Instagram at the Annie Fry Show. Let this old world just spin around. I want to feel it sway. I want to feel it sway. Put some feel good in my soul. Drink a little drink, smoke a little smoke. Look, I think it is true that Democrats are in general panickers, and that's good. We've lived through these things. Third parties really have changed elections for us. Um, Al Gore in 2000 and Hillary Clinton in 2016 lost enough third party votes where they lost the election. So it is a real concern. But if you just look at the underlying metrics, don't look at polls because you and I know polls are usually wrong. Look at actual electoral results in the last two years where Democrats have overperformed polls by almost 10 percent. That's why people like Simon and I are optimistic about what's going to happen 214 days from now. Well, that is interesting to hear. That's Jim Messina, who's an Obama strategist, talking about third party candidates. Axios reports now that... Uh, Quote, today, no labels is ending our effort to put forth a unity ticket in the 2024 presidential election. No, la uh, no labels founder and CEO Nancy Jacobson told Axios today, quote, Americans remain more open to an independent presidential run and hungrier for unifying national leadership than ever. But no labels has always said we would only offer our ballot line to a ticket if we could identify candidates with a credible path to winning the White House. No such candidate emerged, so the responsible course of action is for us to stand down. I think the winner here is RFK Jr. Yeah, that's an understatement. Uh, 
RFK Jr. is going to make the biggest difference in this election. I mean, especially when you've got two candidates that, for for whatever polls you see, people say they didn't want these two. But they voted for these two. I don't understand that. But that's what they said. We don't want these guys, but they voted for them. The real nail in the coffin was like a week ago when Chris Christie was like, guys, I'm going to pass. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, you were offered? <laughs> no labels like, pack it up, guys. Somebody said, oh, that would be the end of his career as a Republican. Now, listen, I would in a heartbeat take Chris Christie as the governor of the state of Illinois and just enjoy every minute of it. That would be so fun. <laughs> to go from J.B. Pritzker to Chris Christie. <laughs> That's the kind of state I'm in, literally. I don't know what is left for Chris Christie. Is he going to run for president in an open mm. primary in 2028 when the whole thing is up for grabs one way or the other? Chris Christie, you're done. I, I mean, you could be a pundit. You could be a, a, a commentator, a contributor, write some books or something. Maybe serve in another person's administration. Administration, but Joe Manchin was probably the only hope. Like a Manchin Cinema ticket. Okay, I just don't know that there's enough confidence that there is a third party that could actually win. And if there's no third party that can actually win, to the point of what they made in the statement that they said in, in that Axios report, there, you gotta you gotta bounce out, and you gotta not be screwing around with people knowing that you are likely going to hurt Joe Biden. I think there's more of a tell here by no labels. Choosing not to field somebody and choosing not to run somebody helps Joe Biden. So when Chris Christie passed on the great opportunity that was presented to him to run on the no labels ticket, he said he's not going to do anything that helps Trump get the presidency. However. However what? Didn't that Oh, well, when he when he's when he goes and says that he's not going to run in no labels, because if he were to run and if they were to field a ticket, that's going to help Donald Trump. Yeah, that's going to pull that, that Chris Christie running on a no labels ticket is not going to make people go, oh, I don't know. I was going to vote for Trump, but I think now I'm going to vote for Chris Christie. Yeah, I guess there weren't that many Chris Christie fans on the Republican side when you look at the at the primary results i was thinking he poll republicans but yeah I, I don't think i don't think so but here we are so no labels out no no labels hmm. is that surprising i don't think it's surprising all right let's do two o'clock in just a minute don't go away crazy times we're in especially this year with all the crap we have to listen to during this political season at least you're gonna you have a break in your day and you can Hear me. <laughs> All kidding aside, the prices are absolutely, without a question, the worst I've ever seen across the board on everyday products. And now you add in government mandates for air conditioning and furnaces. This is the best time this month to still get good pricing on great, efficient equipment that will save your money by simply replacing your old inefficient equipment. Plus, 0% for 60 months. No interest. It's Bart Inman. One easy number, Missouri and Illinois. The easiest of numbers, and there's only one. 314-293-2600 or bartinman.com. Man, I love bringing you great tips and great companies. I'm so glad to be endorsing Rapid Rental Renovations from Murphy Cleanout Services. As you know, if you listen to this show anytime or you listen to weekends, I'll talk about it too. I own some rental properties, and I'm, I'm kind of a small fish, big pond, of course, but they, they help everybody. So whether you're the, the property owner, the rental owner that owns one place, and it's just like a little extra place on the side, or you own 100 doors, Rapid Rental Renovations with Sean and Kristen, they're, they're great. I've talked with them. I've gotten bids from them now. I wish I would have known about them years ago because what they do is if you have a tenant move out, you need somebody to come in and get that place ready fast and cheap, and they know that business. They're not going to give you, like, the full makeover. They're going to give you exactly what you need to get it back on the market. Here's how you contact them. You go to their website, murphycleanoutservices.com, murphycleanoutservices.com, and give them a call.
Judge Mike Carter here to talk to you about my news talk program, Justice and Journalism with Judge Mike Carter. People ask, why is a judge a host of a news talk show? As a judge, I'm the neutral party that seeks to learn the truth and bring you the facts. Somewhere along the line, news shows lost that objectivity. Growing up, I can remember watching Walter Cronkite and knowing you could believe he didn't have a hidden agenda. Before I received my law degree and later became an elected judge for the past decade, I earned a master's degree in journalism at Mizzou, the very same journalism school Walter Cronkite attended. I was given a real appreciation for getting to the truth both as a judge and a journalist. Hence the name of my show, Justice in Journalism, with me, Judge Mike Carter. Here I focus on local newsmakers, personalities, and Missouri officials like Governor Parson, Lieutenant Governor Kehoe, Secretary of State Ashcroft, Attorney General Bailey, and many more. Justice in Journalism with me, Judge Mike Carter, airs on Fox and ABC. You can also watch our past shows at MikeCarter.com, where we ask the questions and let you be the judge. If you'd like to see more of Judge Mike Carter's interviews on his program, Justice in Journalism, visit Mike Carter com kftk fm fluorescent from the under law injury lawyers get jim.com studio 971 fm talk always live on the free odyssey app action from israel on lisa brady fox news what we want to see are some real changes uh, on the israeli side um and um you know if we don't see changes from their side, they'll have to be changes from our side. National Security Communications Advisor John Kirby says President Biden told Prime Minister Netanyahu in a phone call today that concrete steps are needed to address civilian harm, humanitarian suffering, and the safety of aid workers. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. He made clear that U.S. policy with respect to Gaza will be determined by our assessment of Israel's immediate action on these steps. Blinken says the president also called an immediate ceasefire essential to improve the humanitarian situation, urging a deal with Hamas. This after an airstrike hit an aid convoy in Gaza this week, killing seven workers from World Central Kitchen in what Israel's military has called a tragic incident. Netanyahu spokesperson Tal Heinrich telling Fox News, Hamas wants to maximize human suffering. They want to maximize civilian casualties in Gaza because they believe that international pressure could be used as leverage against Israel and let them live another day to carry out uh, another October 7th massacre. She says Israel has taken unprecedented steps to minimize civilian casualties and that there will be no ceasefire that leaves Israeli hostages in Gaza and Hamas in power. Secretary of State Blinken speaking after a NATO meeting in Brussels where he says the message from allies is that a vote Vote on aid for Ukraine can't come soon enough in Congress, and that support for Ukraine is especially important as China, North Korea, and Iran help Russia. This is NATO marks its 75th anniversary. Today's meeting the first with Sweden as a full member. The No Labels group just announcing they will not run a third-party presidential campaign after all. The group's CEO says the goal with someone with a credible path to winning the White House and no one emerged. America's listening to Fox News. Waiting on a tax return? Hopefully it ends up in your hands. Fraudulent tax returns due to identity theft increased by 30% in 2023. If you're in a bind this tax season, LifeLock can help. Our U.S.-based restoration specialists are experts dedicated to helping solve your identity theft issues. And all LifeLock plans are backed by the Million Dollar Protection Package. So we'll reimburse you up to the limits of your plan if you lose money due to identity theft. Help protect your information this tax season with LifeLock. Save up to 25% your first year with promo code NEWS at LifeLock.com. Life insurance. Why are you putting it off? Can't afford it? Too much hassle? Think you don't need it? There's lots of excuses for putting off life insurance. But if you weren't there, who would pay the mortgage and other bills? With Ethos, you could be covered in 10 minutes and boom, family protected. Ethos, fast and easy online term life insurance. Up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at getethos.com. That's getethos.com. Air Comfort Service, heating, cooling, and insulation, weather. Chief Meteorologist Dave Murray. Windy and chilly times continue going through our Thursday afternoon. Clouds dominate a little bit of sunshine, 50 for the high. Tonight, a slow clearing process, a light freeze away from the city, 30 degrees. Sunshine on Friday, let's try to get it up to 55, 30 degrees again on Friday night. Then Saturday, sunshine in control, 60, some showers on Sunday. This is 97.1 FM Talk. Chief Meteorologist Dave Murray. Windowworld.com. You shopping for windows? Maybe you've been thinking about getting replacements. You don't even really know where to start. Well, I've got that covered for you. Call 314-993-1800. That's 314-993-1800. And talk to Windowworld about your replacement window concerns, your problems. Get an estimate. 
so that you can kind of know what you're looking at. You're going to find that Window World is simply the best for less. You're going to understand that they use a double strength glass that gives their Window World replacement windows for your home a strength that isn't traditionally used in those replacement windows. And we're always grateful to partner you with good people. Window World those are good people. When you talk to them, you're going to understand why so many St. Louisans have already relied on Window World replacement windows to take care of their inefficient, dingy, uh, broken, whatever it might be, windows that maybe they're builder's grade. They haven't been replaced in a really long time. You reach out to them. They're going to walk you through the process. They're going to be open and honest with you. And you're going to understand how that lifetime warranty that you're going to get with these windows is going to stand the test of time. 314-993-1800 online at windowworld.com. Frustrated with slow internet speeds? Missouri is set to spend more than $1 billion to bring broadband internet to locations without service. You have until April 23rd to submit evidence that service has been incorrectly reported for locations that should be marked as unserved and eligible for funding. To check service reported for your home or business, go to broadbandmap.mo.gov. That's all one word, broadbandmap.mo.gov. Brought to you by the Missouri Department of Economic Development. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Download the free Upside app and earn real cash back every time you buy gas. Download the free Upside app now and use promo code GIFT for an extra 25 cents per gallon on your first fill-up. That's promo code GIFT. It's what's happening. The White House says it wants an investigation into the deaths of seven aid workers in Gaza. Right now. Earthquake strikes the island of Taiwan, creating a tsunami. They're keeping you informed. Triple shooting in the city of East Point. And up to date, St. Louis is home for conservative talk. The Any Fry Show YouTube live chat poll of the day is sponsored by Ruler Foods. Low prices, no coupons. Ruler Foods. That is exactly what I needed to hear. Thank God someone here knows what they're talking about. That's us. That's right. Gotta love this American ride. All right, you need to take the time and get the full picture. Come on, come on. I love the ladies. I mean, they rev my engine, but they don't belong in the newsroom. It is Anchor Man, not Anchor Lady. What do you want from me? I'm not a very good sweetheart. Goodness sake, kid. Keep your voice down. Your father's listening to the radio. I'm not a very good sweetheart. This is the Annie Fry Show. Welcome back to the Annie Fry Show. Happy Thursday. Grateful that you're spending a little bit of your afternoon, chilly afternoon here with us on 97.1 on St. Louis's home for conservative talk. Um, that We talked earlier uh, several times about the left's green energy push, and it, it, it seems as though this has been the one consistent thing, I would say, through Joe Biden's administration this idea that green energy is kind of this sacred thing that exists in their policy. And it, it's kind of woven through everything that they do. I'm trying to think of another thing that the Biden administration has on a principled basis stood by for the time that they've been in office. Ooh. Most things seems po politically reactionary. Yeah. The, the green energy thing to me, the way that they had kind of force feed it to people with your gas stoves and your, you know, my, I've said this before, I'll say it again. It's the funniest thing when Donald Trump starts talking about windmills and uh, the shower, like when you're standing in the shower and you're trying to get your hair washed or whatever. And it's like, you got to take a shower that's three times as long because the water flows 
three uh, times less than it used to for efficiency purposes. Or when you would talk about wanting to watch television and the first lady says, I'd like to watch television, dear. And you said, we can't. The wind isn't blowing. <laughs> it was very funny. Um, but it's also scary because it does seem to think it, it seems to be the thing that is a constant drumbeat with this administration. Come hell or high water, ironically speaking. <laughs> I I don't know what this administration has more tightly in a principled fashion held closer to than the green thing. I don't think that there is anything that they've held tightly closer to in a more principled fashion. I mean, the closest I think would be their um, diversity pushes and, you know, that sort of thing. But I, I, th and even with the green energy stuff, I really think that there's still an underlying political motivation to that because I think that's a, a cause that endears them to younger voters and that's who they're trying to appeal to, which is really kind of ironic because they are bleeding younger voters right now. I, I have heard studies, I don't have them in front of me right now, of where they're actually children, young people in therapy afraid of what the climate crisis like that the end of the world is nigh yeah yeah that's that's <laughs> they're abusing children to push an agenda because they want to switch to whatever i don't i don't think that they have the evidence to back up that you know the end is near should we take care of the planet should we be good stewards of of this earth and and of the environment absolutely do we want clean rivers and clean waterways that we can spend time you know recreational time in there or go fishing or whatever it is that you want to do with the waterways absolutely do we want to breathe clean air absolutely but should we flip the entire system on its head and put thousands of people in poverty because the world's about to end no that's not accurate at all it's not accurate at all and they talk about it so much that it does jack with the mental uh, state of young children because they don't know any better. These are authority figures that are talking to them saying, hey, listen, we need to do this or we're going to get this in. If your parents at home don't take care of this, the planet's going to end and I don't know what you guys are going to have left. I the, the power grid is not talked about enough when we are discussing green energy and what can actually realistically be implemented in what time frame fox news report the biden administration finalized energy efficient efficiency regulations targeting distribution transformers which are vital for managing the flow of electricity from power stations to consumers in an announcement thursday morning the department of energy said the regulations would help accelerate the development of green energy nationwide and are part of the Biden administration's, quote, commitment to tackling the climate crisis. Overall, the agency projected that requiring more efficient transformers will save utilities and businesses $824 million a year in electricity costs. The energy secretary said these standards are going to make America's power grid more resilient. They'll support good paying, high quality manu manufacturing jobs, and they'll help us deploy more affordable and reliable and clean electricity more quickly across the country. It's hard for me to take a lot of these people seriously when I hear some of the other things that they're telling us that we're going to have to do. And and like the, the actual set goal outcome of, for instance, when President Biden said that we won't be using fuel in 2030. <laughs> Uh, she went on to say it's going to provide critical long term certainty for domestic manufacturing and production investments. It's going to strengthen energy and economic supply chain security, and it'll position American producers and workers to capture an evolving and growing market. Under DOE's regulations, energy efficiency gains will be achieved with 75 percent of the transformers on the market being manufactured with grain oriented electrical steel and another 25% being manufactured with amorphous alloy, a lesser-used electric steel core material. Manufacturers will begin five years to ensure total compliance with the regulations. Then there's Vivek Ramaswamy. Look, I think the Climate Corps is based on a false premise. There is no climate emergency in the United States or around the world. That is a bold counterpoint to the amount of taxpayer dollars that are being invested in this under the guise of a crisis and if you say climate crisis on a college campus you're gonna have a lot of people who have been raised to just believe literally 
listen to the words of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I mean, we're like halfway done from mm -hmm. the time that she said that the world was going to end. I'm always asking myself, do these people really believe what they're saying? Are they just selling or do they really believe it? And if you really believed it, it's interesting. That, like if, if I felt like I knew that I only had five or six years left, I would be spending my time differently. Yeah. You know that yeah. retirement that I'm saving for? Nope. Yeah. That's coming back to me, and I'm using those funds for uh, fortifying the days that I have left on, on God's great earth. That's not how these people act, and that's not how they live. It reminds me of, um, who's the comedian? I talk about this every once in a while. Louis C.K., maybe? did an open stand-up bit, and it was on some streaming platform, and this was maybe, I don't know, six years ago, seven years ago that I saw this, and he was talking about abortion, and he goes, it's interesting because if you, he's like, objectively speaking, I'm not saying I'm one or the other, but if you look at one side of the abortion argument and you see that one side believes that having an abortion is as simple as passing waste out of your body, he says that with colorful language, a uh, streaming comedy special, you can imagine, but if one side looks at an abortion, like it is simply the excreting of waste out of your body an unwanted substance that needs to be removed from the body that is the way a portion of the people who are pro-abortion believe that experience to be that it's just the elimination of waste from one's body and if you believe that you'd be like what is the big freaking deal however if you reflect on the other side and the other side is they're going you are murdering babies and that's what they really believe is happening. I think it was Louis C.K. He's like, why are they standing so peacefully and silent on the sidewalk holding hands when babies are being murdered? He's only, he, like, he makes the point. If this is what these people truly believe is happening, you would understand how they'd be outraged and almost impressed with their ability to maintain and contain themselves in the process. You could shift to the green the energy crisis, the climate crisis that we are facing right now, and ask yourself if John Kerry is so concerned about the climate crisis that is upon us, if Al Gore is so convinced, as I saw on Twitter just the other day, I think he's, I think it was like, a, it was in the early 2000s. He's like, in five years or 10 years, there will be no more snow um, on Kilimanjaro or something like that. Yeah. And then they showed a picture currently. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, look at the snow. <laughs> there it is. It's hard to believe what they're selling when they don't practice what they preach and when they don't actually live the lives that they're expecting you to have. They can manifest something like carbon credits that the wealthy can afford to live the life that they want to live. But no, not you. Put your gas stove away, you terrible, terrible person. It's just, I just can't really buy it. And then you have Vivek going, no climate crisis. This is not even real. Is Vivek right? Is, it, is the truth somewhere in the middle? I don't know. What's really amazing to me is that <clears throat> I think you're right that this is the one issue that's very, very consistent for Democrats <clears throat> through administrations. I mean, this is not something that just the Biden administration has done. This is Obama. This is Clinton. They've all been talking about green energy and, and saving the world for a long time uh, because it plays well. It sounds nice. It's something that even as a Republican, I, I hear. It sounds terrifying. I, well, I hear uh, we want to save the world from you know, greenhouse gases. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> initially, that sounds pretty good. Once you start to dig in, you realize that it's the same different problem, same solution to every problem, mm -hmm. which is we just need more of your money and we're going to keep spending. And that is the solution to everything that they do. And at some point, the message starts to ring a little hollow. And I think we've gotten to that point now. Well, the message rings hollow whenever they're asked, how much change are we going to get for this amount of money? And they're like, we don't know. Or yeah. when they offer a, an amount of change, they're like, over the course of three years, we can save X amount of carbon in the atmosphere. And then they're like, but China produces that in six months. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So – that's that's why it rings hollow. It's because a they don't have the the answers like this, then this. They say we th this because we think that'll help, and we need a lot of your money. And oh, not only that, we need a little more of of that control so that we can make sure that this is implemented prop properly. Yeah. So we can't be having you out there with your electric or with your gas stoves. We need you on electric stoves. Except for Kamala Harris.
who brought in the new year in front of her gas stove. What a flex. <laughs> like, I don't need no stinking electric stove, but I'm not one of you. I wish I had. We don't have a gas stove in our house. We did in our previous oh, house. Oh, man, yeah. And I love gas stoves. My husband, he likes to cook, and I don't stop him. I like to eat the food he makes. And he really wants a gas stove. And I'm like, maybe we need to hurry that process up. Or just vote for smarter people. <laughs> it's weird. Like, your vote matters for the stove that you can use, among many, many other things. There's that, that uh, there's always something new and I'll be having a com I'll be having a conversation I'll be interviewing someone here like a Joe Concha or something like that and they'll be talking someone was saying ceiling fans who are we just talking to was talking about ceiling fans and oh. saying that ceiling fans were like not allowed or they are they coming after ceiling fans did I miss that I, I might have missed that one I remember I think that was today was it yes it's been a long day man I hope not <clears throat> I love ceiling fans I love attic fans too those things are great this summer <laughs> I, I don't feel like I feel like a ceiling fan would be more green yeah right it seems <laughs> counterintuitive but here we are I don't know palm leaves maybe we'll get to there you have to have a person waving them at you it's a little Making more expensive 20 but... bucks an hour yeah <laughs> minimum wage what do you do I I fan Ryan with palm leaves and I feed him grapes <laughs> that's weird let's green send energy Senator, Senator Kennedy if we spend 50 trillion dollars to make the United States of America carbon neutral by 2050. How much will that lower world temperatures? I can't answer that because we don't know what China and India and the rest of the globe has done. Mm. Okay. Really? Have you had heard anybody from the Biden administration say how much it will lower world temperatures? No. Does anybody know how much it will lower world temperatures? No? 50 trillion. Wow. T, 50 trillion. They don't know. And why? It's because it depends on what China and India and these other places. Of course it does. Of course it does. But they're still willing to ask for $50 trillion that we don't have for an unmeasurable. No way. This is like uh, global warming. Well, crap. It's not warming. we got to change the name. Climate change. The climate is going to change. Well, of course it is. We'll be proved right every day. when the It is 40 degrees in April right now on opening day in St. Louis. The climate changes day to day basis, month to month, year to year, decade to decade. The climate changes that will always play. That was from February of 2023 when you had Senator Kennedy asking these individuals, What would $50 trillion get us? And they're like, We don't know. What? <laughs> get out of here. Go home. Turn on your ceiling fans. Even if it was $50 million. Even if it was <laughs> $50. Fifty dollars. Give me an answer. Like, yeah. just tell me something. Like, give me something that, I, and I'll give you fifty dollars. I really will. Like, if you can get tell me for sure that it's going to do something, I'll give you the fifty bucks. I don't know that we can do fifty trillion. Seems like a pretty high number. I know that we can't do fifty trillion dollars, even if you did have the numbers <laughs> that would, in your mind, justify it. These people are nuts. Senator Kennedy is a national treasure, though. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back in just a minute. Don't go away. I'm in love with your body. This is the Annie Fry Show. Follow Annie on Twitter at Annie Fry Show. The Diamond Shop, waiting for you to stop by and save because it's April and it is spring. And they are celebrating with 40% off all color stone jewelry this month. Go find something at the Diamond Shop for yourself. Find something that's going to put the biggest smile on your loved one's life. Uh, make sure that they know that you went to the Diamond Shop because when you get something from the Diamond Shop, they're going to help continue to take care of that for you. You're going to develop a relationship with them. Many people who shop at the Diamond Shop are generational shoppers because their parents went to the Diamond Shop and they know that they've always been treated right. That's the kind of place that the Diamond Shop in Clayton is for your family and for mine. You can also save 30% off all in-stock jewelry. So the 40% off all color stone jewelry, 30% off all in-stock jewelry. And when you go online to thediamondshop.net, you sign up to be a VIP. 
add an extra 10% off the top of that. They're located in Clayton. They've been in St. Louis since 1910. And you can go shop in their store in Clayton and understand exactly what I'm talking about. I've said this before. I'll say it again. When you walk into the diamond shop, you sparkle. It is that beautiful in there. And the pieces that they have on display ready for you to save is so worth your time. You find them online at thediamondshop.net. Baseball is back, basketball is heating up, and the NFL Draft is right around the corner. Listen to the latest on the teams you love with the free Odyssey app. The biggest sports radio stations in the country providing unrivaled local coverage of their teams, all in one place. Exclusive interviews with players, coaches, and team executives, streaming live and always available on demand. Stay in the know with your favorite teams with Odyssey. A-U-D-A-C-Y. Download the free Odyssey app today. Hey, homeowners, it's time to transform your house into a masterpiece with Lakeside Renovation and Design, your James Hardy siding experts. Picture this, durable, weather-resistant siding that doesn't just protect, but elevates your home's value and curb appeal. James Hardy, the gold standard in siding, installed by the pros at Lakeside. Say goodbye to maintenance headaches and hello to a home that stands the test of time. Ready for a siding upgrade? Lakeside Renovation and Design is your go-to. Visit our showroom or call today. Unleash the potential of your home with James Hardy Siding. The IRS definitely ramped up operations since the pandemic slowed them down, and activity only increases from here. Hi, this is Land Story with the Land Story Law Firm. If you're currently under audit or you haven't paid your taxes in the past, now's the time to call the Land Story Law Firm. The IRS has a published Taxpayer Bill of Rights, which says you have the right to retain legal representation. Because IRS problems are legal problems, and the Land Story Law Firm focuses specifically on addressing IRS issues for our clients. It's all we do. We get out in front of the IRS, devise the best resolution plan, and work to make sure you're able to take advantage of every program you're qualified to receive. So before you send money to some out-of-town, high-pressure company, call the Land Story Law Firm. We're local, located right here in St. Louis. Our Visit Lance, D-R-U-R-Y Law.com to schedule your free consultation with your local tax resolution law firm, the Lance Story Law Firm, 314-260-6120. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. Hi, I'm Bob Kershaw with Retirement Advisory Group. Are you worried about market volatility in this election year? Are you concerned your money won't last you through retirement? Hi, I'm Tammy Kershaw, and as a family-owned business, we are committed to protecting your retirement, whether you're nearing retirement or already retired. We have a lot of folks that aren't aware of all the new investment choices that are available, which give you growth and protection from losses at the same time. Are you aware of all the fees that you are currently paying? We can show you how to avoid those fees. So come in now for your free retirement review and get a second opinion on your retirement plan. And just for coming in, you'll get a copy of our latest edition book, Your Key to a Worry-Free Retirement. Let us show you how to retire with confidence. We are proud to say we haven't lost a penny of our clients' money in 38 years, and we won't lose a penny of yours either. Let our family help your family. Call us now at 314-993-9494 or go online to retirementkey.com. That's retirementkey.com. I'm embarrassed to say this. I've been using deodorant on my armpits for 30 years, and any time I noticed odor anywhere else, I thought I needed another shower, I wasn't clean, or I felt like there was something wrong with me. And then my gynecologist told me about Lumi. It's a whole body deodorant for pits, feet, and privates that controls odor anywhere and everywhere on your body. Since Lumi, I never have to worry about body odor ever again, anywhere on my body. And that reassurance is worth every penny. There's a special offer for listeners. Use code 222 and get 15% off your first purchase with code 222, like the Lumi Starter Pack, a citified body wash, or new Lumi Plus sweat control. That's L-U-M-E deodorant.com, code 222 for 15% percent off your first purchase with over 200,000 five-star reviews i am so sure you're gonna love it or return it for free with lumi's 60-day money-back guarantee that's l-u-m-e deodorant.com code 222 to save 15 percent today you're listening to the annie fry show live from the air comfort service heating cooling and insulation studio if you're not sure who to call for air conditioning services contact the team at air comfort service with 55 years of experience and thousands of five-star reviews you can trust them with the comfort of your or home visit aircomfortservice.com when the radio is away 971 can still play if you have the odyssey app of course listen to any of your favorite hosts on 971 through your phone on st louis's home for conservative talk
You're listening to The Annie Fry Show. Find the podcast, on-demand audio, and more at 971talk.com slash Annie. Time to play. Is Annie okay with this? Oh, hey, Trisha. Hi, how are you? Hi, Annie. <laughs> this is the worst Trisha impression ever. This is Trisha. <laughs> At least Trisha sounds somewhat female. <laughs> oh, gosh. You think that doesn't sound like a female? That sounds point perfect like a female I in said, my head. I said it did. <laughs> no, you said Trisha did. I thought, oh, you're talking about that being Trisha. I see where your mind's at now. <laughs> Thanks for including me in the show, you guys. <laughs> so you did, just insulted Trisha. Did, did, <laughs> do you I want the papers? Saying, <laughs> I was saying the voice you do for me sounds a little bit like this. Hey, this is Andy Fry, Andy Fry Show, ready to roll here on uh, Monday <laughs> at noon. It's a disrespect for truckers. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a few listening on any given moment. But, yeah, and that was actually higher than you traditionally do my voice. Yeah, 10 for good buddy. <laughs> anyway, Trisha is otherwise uh, inclined yeah, at the moment. she's doing program director things. Yes, yeah, so uh, we have a fill-in today for Annie. Are you okay? And so, I'm okay with it. Yeah, so it's me. Yay. So my first story <laughs> here is Florida man arrested after a police standoff from atop a cell tower. A Florida man is being uh, behind bars after he climbed a cell tower, disconnected a bunch of wires, oh and, then, and then refused to come down for four hours. It seems risky. They said he claimed to be a t- he claimed to be a T-Mobile employee, but he wasn't. Was he sprint? And, well, <laughs> <laughs> that's he just was on it. a T-Mobile so tower. The disgruntled sprint got laid off when T-Mobile ate them up. Police were dispatched to the scene and attempted to convince the man, later identified as 38-year-old Richard Smith, to come down. Rich, yeah, Rich, right. Richard Smith. Richard, yeah, right. <laughs> Richard Smith. Yeah. Come down. I'm Richard Smith with T-Mobile, and I'm yeah. not coming yeah. down. My last name's Cranium. Uh, he's been charged with burglary, burglary of an ocup- unoccupied structure and criminal of mischief. A phone tower. Yeah, but they still haven't figured out what his attention is. Is it worth are. less than $1,000? <laughs> I was going to say, what well, was this he is trying my, this to This is Miami. This is the first guy that got punished under the new anti-squatter laws. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't live there. <laughs> so, Annie, are you okay with bungee jumping? Uh, well, let's see. I've done stuff like that. The dragon's wing at Six Flags. Is You've that done that? Multiple times. Oh, no. Ooh, I, I haven't. That. No, I won't Just because that. it costs extra. No, 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 no. I want to, though. I want to so bad. Your heart my, probably can't. That's my nightmare. No, my heart couldn't handle it before I had heart issues. I am not a heights person. That's right. I remember that. Um, yeah, I've done that multiple times. I don't know why I did it. I definitely was trying to prove something to somebody because it's not like <laughs> something that I really want to do, but it's like you find yourself at the top and you're like, I know uh, you're wondering how I got here. Yeah. And I am too. What the heck is going on? Uh, so in high school, I did it with my friends a couple times and it's wild, man. <laughs> uh, oh gosh, I can't talk about it yet. I Sometimes I say yes to things. Because the opportunity presents itself, and every part of me is going, Annie, you do not want to do that, but the opportunity is too big, and so Man, you say yes. It's it's wild that you would bungee jump, but that thing that you're talking about, you were Can't talk about it yet. Are you a heights person? Like, are you apprehensive when you I'm do a, say heights? I'm, like, apprehensive of plunging to my death. But sure. not heights in But it doesn't itself. make you like wobbly. Because I know a lot of people, if they even get near heights or watch a video of somebody in a precarious situation at heights, I mean, no, they, they like a, fall I, out of their chair. I am somebody who <laughs> I like to make, I like to understand my surroundings. I like to be in control of my surroundings. And I am not a risk taker by nature. But that looks different at near 40 than it did when I was 17. Okay, that's fair. But I'm not not looking to put myself in a position to be threatened. And I I mean, everybody knows how I feel about spiders. I don't like them. I have an irrational fear of them. I have maybe a couple other fears, but I'm not saying what they are. (laughs) Can you just message me privately? No, because I don't want some psychopath to find out what my fear is and then implement it on me because 
they, they have said it on the air. Speaking of fears, mm -hmm. a Pennsylvania man in a scream mask killed his neighbor with a chainsaw oh, and then went home to no. watch a movie. Oh, no. What movie? Yeah, what movie? <laughs> <laughs> I might have been scream. Uh, a Pennsylvania man attacked and killed his neighbor this week using a knife and a chainsaw while wearing a mask and costume like the one from the movie Scream. Oh, no. He then went home and watched a movie until police came, according to the criminal complaint from the uh, Pennsylvania State Police. They didn't provide a motive, but the suspect's sister said her brother told her a week ago that he wanted to kill the victim. Oh, no. Oh, so he, no. he knew he was going to get caught. Yeah, oh, he's, yeah. Like, he's like, I got a couple go hours. I guess I'll just on. go watch a movie. Uh, Annie, are you okay with the Scream franchise? I liked, well, you say franchise. The first Scream movie was a great movie. Yeah, it was. And when it came out, what year would that have been? Was that a 90s yeah, movie? Yeah, like, I, like, think like so. I think so. 96, 97, something like that. Scream. I, what, do you, what do you Google? Scream. Scream 2. 1996. Okay. Yeah. 1996. And it, is it rated R? Probably for violence. Violence, yeah. I, I don't remember the language. All I remember is the guy in the scream mask, or whoever it ended up being, because it's always somebody different. Yeah, it's pretty dark. The way that they, they run is all hunched over, and they, they yeah. flail around a yeah. lot. With the, scream, it was so scary the scream way they is ran. Scream the movie that all of those parodies of horror movies, like Scream to me was the biggest chunk of what would be parodied because it was that big. You, mm -hmm. don't, you don't parody things. You can't parody something that not everybody knows and understands to begin with. But what were those movies called? The, the, all the scary movies. Movie. Scary movies. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, Scream itself was meta in that yes. it recognized yes. the, the standards of what horror movies right. do, and they used them. That was the motivation. Yeah. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. For the killers. Exactly. I, what are they on now? Like Scream 6 or I, something? When I Google it, it there was a... There was at least a six. Well, they're past numbers now, and they're like calling it like scream. Oh, are they into yeah, that? Yeah, resurrections okay. or something weird like that. Gotcha. I, I asked if it was rated R. I don't feel like I understand the rating system from the perspective of when I was a child, versus what is rated R now. Like I feel like scream is rated R, and there is violence. Like it is not something that I would want. I'm trying to think, you know, is there, is, there's no nudity in it, is there? Mm -mm, no. I don't think Not so. Not that I remember. Um, But it's violent. There's probably some words in it. But I feel like you get away with words in PG-13 now like you didn't used to. Violence, like what looked violent and gory in 1996, they've come, I mean, to me, the Saw movies really oh, yeah. blew oh, yeah. that. And I've never seen any of those that have zero interest in it. But then I told the story a couple months ago about... I guess it was over, was it over Christmas break where I let my kids watch the Goonies? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And the first that movie is rated like PG. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, like when you're watching it, and I'm like, kids, gather around, <laughs> and they're sitting there. I know. And the first part of it's got what's the one kid who is now an adult and is talking about everybody was sexually uh, harassed? One of the Corey, Corey, Corey Feldman. Feldman. He's in there, and he's 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 like the the smooth talker of the group or whatever, and. Like, the stuff that he's saying is incredibly mature. <laughs> For my little seven-year-old daughter, I'm like, get out of the room, get out of the room. They have the statue. Oh, my gosh. The naked statue. I forgot about that. And the, the weenie falls off of it. <laughs> and then yeah. they put it on and put it upside down. Yeah. And then, like, there are comments about that. And, like, the judgment that my children thrust upon me. For being like, hey kids, this is a classic movie. You should see this. Like it was a it was a parent parent to child obligatory sit down and learn something here. Let's watch the Goonies. And they just like slow pan to me like, Mom. And it's like, what kind of filth were you raised on? I'm like, it's the Goonies. You know what's amazing? You saved us so much heartache. Because I think it was a week later that Katie goes, you know what film we should watch with the kids? I think you is should. It's the Goonie. <laughs> and it was right after you had done that I and said that. I think you should. You just should fast forward through the first 15. Wait until they like get to the point where they start I'm, exploring. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to do that. And did you see also that Goonies 2 is happening now? No, oh, really? Nor do I care. Yeah. The <laughs> entire said, original cast. The what falls off? I said ween. Yeah. <laughs> talking about this with my seven I was like oh my gosh and my, hus my husband's cooking in the kitchen and I'm sitting in the living room and the kids are between us 
and he's like, you know, <laughs> chop, chop, flip, flip in the kitchen, whatever it is. And he's hearing this stuff, and his eyebrows are getting higher and higher. And he's like peeking at me, like, you gonna let this ride or what? And I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to act like maybe they're not paying close enough attention. Yeah, or maybe they're not. Yeah, hearing we it. didn't hear that. Did we? They're not paying close enough attention. They're all staring there's at you. Like- no, there's no instance in my life. Where if I fight, flight, or freeze, I freeze except that moment. <laughs> I froze and I had nothing, nowhere to go. Goonies. Gosh. All right. Harvard apologizes for and removes creepy book binding made of human skin. Barf. What? Who? <laughs> Harvard. Har- yeah, so on Wednesday, Harvard University announced that it removed a human skin binding from a gruesome book in its library. How's? Who's? It was what? the original What's... Hannibal script. <laughs> it was not that. It was a book called, uh, it's in French, it, <laughs> De Destinies de l'Ame, I guess. It means the destinies of the soul in English, and it was written in 1880. Man, but the... I would take that book super seriously because it's, <laughs> it's bound in human flesh. Yeah, we all saw that movie with Bruce yeah. Campbell. I don't you know how that goes. I don't know what's in the book, but I'm going to take it seriously. Uh, the university explained that the owner of the book, Dr. Ludovic Buland. Wait, Doug has a point. Harvard banned a book. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they, very good. They didn't ban it. They Go just removed break. the binding. <laughs> But, so that's uh, all we have to do? Yeah, yeah apparently. <laughs> just make it so you can't um, just take the, the cover titles. off. Yeah. But, but apparently this was from this doctor's, the skin was from a woman who died in this doctor's hospital, and he didn't receive consent, and that's why Harvard you oh, that's to, You should have to have consent. Yeah. Your skin's going to use to be binding books? So any, you know what? How, sh- how could she have consented right. at that point? Like, hey, when you die, can I use your skin to bind this book? See, you got to think too far ahead. So, Annie, are you okay with classic literature? No. (laughs) It's too much work. (laughs) That book is classic literature, just because it's old. Um, I want to be somebody who reads classic literature, but earlier in the show where I was talking about not having any personal time, Mm -hmm. see that part of the podcast. One of the best things about reading classic literature is that if you wear glasses, you can take them off and put just one side in your mouth and really think about and things for them. a second. Yeah, this is and exactly go, okay. This is exactly the same as as Charlemagne's point with DEI and corporations. Mm-hmm. As long as you sit there and look like you're pensive with a classic literature book in your hand, people will assume <laughs> yeah. that you're smart. You might not even be literate and able to read, but you yeah. have those glasses in your mouth. It's great. Somebody it mentions the word Hemingway. You just take those glasses off for a second and, and put like, them in your mouth. Molly Hemingway? <laughs> and people go, She's my favorite. Oh, he Hemingway. must have a strong opinion about uh, hills like white, el- white elephants. You got time for one more? I got all the time. All right. World. Shoplifter. There's nobody Ch- listening right now. Everyone's Sh- watching the freaking Cardinals. Sh- they, ain't, they don't play yet. Mm-mm. Shoplifter chased by police on horses in New Mexico. A shoplifter was detained outside. Shoplifter a... chased by what? Police on horses. Mounted police. Okay, yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, a shoplifter was detained outside of a Walgreens this month for trying to outrun a horse-mounted police officer. It wasn't me, the man yells as he leads the horse and police officer <laughs> into the this. street. He's running with his arms <laughs> flailing like Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> That's great. By the way, <laughs> I play the music for our my son's baseball team. And I have home run songs that I play for them. Uh, one of them is Gone by John Michael Montgomery, I think. Is, who sings that? Gone, 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 whatever. One of them it was last year, the Whopper song. <laughs> <laughs> I think this year I'm adding to the mix the Pirates of the Caribbean yep. he's, <laughs> song. He's so a when, pirate. Yeah, so that when they're running around the bases, they just I, everybody just thinks they look like Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> I got to run that by the team, maybe. If my son hits a home run, though. You better believe it. Just do it. Yeah, Yeah, don't run it by anybody. I'll be like, Mom. I'll be like, run the bases, kid. (laughs) So this guy stole $230 worth of merchandise from Walgreens, and uh, he was arrested. Annie, are you okay with horseback riding? Uh, Yeah, I've done it. It's been a long time. That was like a Girl Scouts thing. Mm -hmm. I grew up. Here, ride these horses. And you're like, okay, give me a patch. (laughs) <laughs> aren't, aren't girls supposed to love horses though aren't all girls supposed to love my horses? sister got a horse when she turned 13 what yeah she was begging for it and so my dad and my uncle went together and got each of their brad got wanted their do- one too but he was a boy so no i wanted a four-wheeler <laughs> and they didn't know what to do with it, and that's why he has all that glue yeah but they got her this horse and my dad ended up loving this horse and riding this horse and take care of this horse and then got kicked off this horse and it broke his back and that took him a while to recover from but Pretty hard. That's an so, incredible story. Yeah, pretty hard to follow that up. <laughs> yeah, with what are we funny. gonna do now? Just play the thing. You're talking about horse glue. 
Well, yeah, because it's you just figure that. 45 seconds we've ever had on well, the Well, you know, after <laughs> a 13 year old girl gets a horse and she rides it for a few days, you kind of get bored with it. There's like eight people in St. Louis who are like, I just, you know, I wonder what's going on on 97 1 right <laughs> yeah. now. And they were like, oh, and now they're <laughs> back to the Clydesdale horses mm-hmm. that have everybody's attention right now. Oh, I wasn't going to mention that, but now that you have, Clydesdales are pretty neat. Was it a Clydesdale, Brad? It yeah, was not. They had a Clydesdale. <laughs> it was not. I think it was an Appaloosa. Oh. See, when we discuss Appaloosas or Hemingway for that matter. You need some glasses. I need my glasses. Just chew on them and. Yes. You know what you don't do, though? Don't chew on the lenses. Then it does the opposite thing. Then you don't look smart. You actually look dumber. Which is amazing. (laughs) (laughs) We'll be right back. Whoever what you want to do coming over you. Keep on smiling what we go through. This is the Annie Fry Show. Interact with Annie on Facebook. The Annie Fry Show. Have I talked to you about Jen Teske recently? I want you to know that while the market is heating up, if you've even been considering listing your home on the Illinois side of the river, you got to reach out to Jen Teske and ask her how to get started. You can just ask her the questions like, what might my house be worth? Which will help you set up so that you can gauge that. And if you decide to list your house and you decide to go with Jen Teske with REMAX Lines, highly recommend. You're going to understand how all of her years of experience of understanding and mastering the market on the Illinois side of the river is going to come together to make your experience one that you will rave about. The next time you hear your friend or family member saying, "Ah, I think we're going to look at listing our house, you're going to say, you got to call Jen Teske. Just trust me on this. you got to call Jen Teske. 618-541-1010. You can call her. You can text her at 618-541-1010. It's Jen Teske with REMAX Alliance, and she has the best team in the business ready to work and hustle for you to give you the truth and honesty you need to have a great and successful experience selling your home or buying a home on the Illinois side of the river. You can find them online at jenteskehomes.com. We see them every day. People driving using their phones. There's a sneak a peeker or the fast scroller who can quickly become the fender bender. The got a ticketer or the driver who killed someone. Put the phone away or pay. Paid for by NHTSA. In business, service is everything. Cintas delivers what you need to better serve your customers. Whether it's freshly laundered work apparel for almost any job imaginable, tested and inspected fire protection systems, first aid and safety supplies, on-site AED training, or mops and restroom products stocked and ready when you need them. Better work days happen together. So visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the work day. We see them every day. People driving using their phones. The sneak a peeker or the fast scroller who can quickly become the fender benderer, the got a ticketer, or the driver who killed someone. Put the phone away or pay. Paid for by NHTSA. I was having a lot of sinus infections. My sinuses were clogged, pressure, headaches. Linda suffered for years with chronic sinus infections. You don't feel like doing anything. When when you feel like your head is completely clogged, all you want to do is just lay down and sleep. And the pressure uh, is just not fun. Always walking around with a headache. Now her issues are gone. How? A minimally invasive procedure done in the office of St. Louis Sinus Centers called balloon sinuplasty. I really did not know what it was like to feel like you're really breathing and not being so clogged up. I would do it again in a heartbeat and I would definitely recommend it for someone else. Do you suffer with chronic sinus infections? Facial pain, pressure, congestion. Find out if balloon sinuplasty is the solution for you. Set an appointment today with St. Louis Sinus Centers. Call 314-332-2885. 314-332-2885. That's 314-332-2885. Ever made $5,000 in four hours? Saturday, April 13th is your last chance to do it. That's when work at MetroSTL.com is coming to the North County Transit Center in Ferguson on Pershaw Road for their four-hour 5K bonus hiring event from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'll be there looking for Metro Transit mechanics, van, and bus operators. Score 5K at Metro Transit's four-hour 5K bonus last chance hiring event Saturday, April 13th. 
The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely on advertisements. If you've been injured in a car wreck, you need the best. Let us make your case our cause. Car accident? Call Under Law for a free review at 314 or 618 9 million. Hey, you going to party with us on Monday for the eclipse? Yeah. The question of the day is Nothing like an uh, eclipse on the radio. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and judged by the fact that when I went, yeah, everybody went, oh. <laughs> will you be watching Monday's Eclipse? That is the subject of the Annie Fry YouTube live chat poll, yes or no. We'll give the results here shortly. It's 248. This time check is sponsored by Jerry Kelly Heating and Air Conditioning. It's time for a $98 AC tune-up. Hey, it's Mark Reardon. Why is the Justice Department targeting St. Louis for its new violent crime initiative? We're going to talk about it with Jane Duker coming up. This is the Annie Fry Show. Interact with Annie on Facebook. The Annie Fry Show. Fry show. Gosh, I want to talk about something fun and exciting. We don't have a ton of time here. I'm looking forward to tomorrow's show. Do we know who's playing X's and O's tomorrow yet? Uh, I have an idea, but I haven't locked anything it's in not yet. not for certain yet. How do you feel about X's and O's tomorrow, Ryan? Your first time back in, like, you haven't done it for three weeks. True. I feel very good about this week. I have worked ahead a bit, and I've got some good sound. i got a couple of kind of you know, a little off the wall questions, but I think they're. Are they about stuff we've done on the show? Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, they're oh! news related. They're they're definitely topically related. So I would say generally yes, but they're they're good questions. I think they're the kind. Here's what I always shoot for: the kind of question that, in asking it, if you have kind of a general knowledge about the subject, you might be able to deduce the answer from just hearing the question. I got a lot of those, so I feel good about this week. How do you feel about it? Uh, <laughs> Look, not sweat. so good anymore. <laughs> Man. I don't know now. Uh. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be great on my end. Now, if I, Brad fumbles the ball, then Brad fumbles the ball. What role does Brad have in X's and O's being executed? He usually is the booker of guests, yeah. Yeah. which is a big part of it. Has he ever failed to get the job done once? I don't think so. No. I mean, I know we've scrambled last minute a couple times if somebody cancels like on a Friday. Yeah, that we've makes had it that really happen. hard. But, uh, but I think I don't think that we've ever had to miss a game for no. that reason. Mm -mm. He's always pulled through. Yeah. How'd you feel being a contestant last time? I tell you what, it was rough for two reasons. One <laughs> is that I've never been a contestant. The other is that I was whacked out of my <laughs> mind, tired. <laughs> <laughs> that that was the weirdest show because it was the middle of the night for me having come back from Japan, and it was just so weird. I, and standing in a different spot than I'm used to, you know, answering questions. It was it was probably uh, one of my worst appearances on X's and O's. Did it make you have a, a did, it, did the different perspective give you insight on what it's like to be on this side of the questions? I, as you guys both know, you came to the trivia night for mm -hmm. my son's Washington D.C. trip. And my husband and I wrote all 100 questions. Actually, there are more than 100 questions. And it's a challenge because you you do not – if you've ever been to a trivia night and, like, the winning score out of 100 is, like, 37. Yeah. That's rough. It's yeah. not only not yeah. fun. It's, it's, like, actively not fun. Yeah. yeah, people get mad. Yes. It's not the way you want it to go. And yep. we don't – like Trisha said last week, it's like, I'm worried I made these questions too hard. It's difficult to understand yep. what is – I mean, trivia is different than what you're doing because if you're trying to go trivial versus just testing the knowledge of people, there's a there's a different element there. But it's difficult to to gauge like what's a challenging question, what's challenging enough, not where everyone's like, oh, this is obvious. It's kind of hard to yeah, because if they're all easy, then it's going to be tough to determine who actually deserves to win. I would say with X's and O's, there is a sweet spot. 
and that is finding where the question is challenging enough that like 75% of people would know it. So it's not, obviously we're on the radio, so it's not just you guys. It's everybody listening, mm-hmm. playing, and thinking about the questions too. But I got to find something that's like, the best questions are ones where it's right on the tip of your tongue and you think you know it, but you're not 100% sure. Those are hard to find. And then also, you probably experienced this, Annie, when doing trivia, you have to write the question in such a way that there can only be one answer. Because if you write, uh, what's the St. Louis baseball team that was here in 1947 and whatever? Well, that could be the Cardinals, but it could also be the Browns. Were the Browns still here in 47? Uh, I don't know. I, don't I think, think so. so. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying this off the top of my head. Those are the kind of questions that you have to be very, very narrow in the phrasing of the question so that it can only be one possible answer. And you also had, Trisha had a wrong answer for an understandable reason with one of the questions and it affected you. But you've done that too in writing oh, yeah. questions where it's like you look it up, you Google it, and either the answer you write down made sense at the time, but like upon further review, yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, when you're doing news too, it's not stuff that, has been long researched. So sometimes somebody will write uh, an article real quick about who knows what. They wrote about The Rock running for president, something Mm -hmm. like that. And you read the article and you glean something from it. Well, then you find out a a day later that, oh, The Rock clarified and he didn't actually say that quote, but then you didn't see that article. So, you know, it's stuff that's happened so fast. You got to keep up on it. All right, let's get to the YouTube live chat poll. X's and O's tomorrow will be at 2 o'clock as it is each Friday. We hope you join us. Uh, Play along with us on the Annie Fry YouTube channel. We are 268 people away from 7,000 subscribers. Oh, that's awesome. If you got Brad 10,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel, he'd be a happy camper. Yes. Yeah, that, that's my goal for the year is to get, get us to 10,000 by the end of the year. So We put up a lot of YouTube shorts, and we get uh, good exposure from our YouTube shorts, mm-hmm. that, and Brad's working his tail off on those every day. So if you haven't gone to the YouTube channel, it's not just the live stream that is up there and working on some new things that we're going to be adding into the YouTube channel. So come join us there and and subscribe and help get us over 7,000. We're kind of to the point now where I feel like I can promote it a little bit and we'll get pretty close to it. I'm excited about 7,000, although you, as you know, personally... I celebrate each and every one. <laughs> yeah, it's obnoxious. It's, it's like, little, another one! That's a little yeah. party popper have, in his office. Yeah. Every day. Confetti <laughs> everywhere. Will you be watching Monday's Eclipse? Yes or no? We are a not sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't know what we're going to be doing. We're hoping to. We have some options in front of us, and I need to uh, drill down the people who can make some decisions to find out maybe if we could be out and about. We'll see. Uh, but we're not sure yet. I asked you all on the Annie Fry YouTube live chat poll today, and 67% of you said yes. So I think people are going to be out and about. If you are altering your plans for Monday, keep us with you. We would love to spend the afternoon with you, and uh, as we do each day here, noon to 3. Don't go away. We got Mark Reardon coming up uh, next on 97.1 FM Talk. St. Louis is home for conservative talk. We appreciate you being here each and every day. And stick around. Mark Reardon next. Another glass of that rock and roll. Turn up the band, find the whole gonna lose control tonight. What do you want from me? I'm not a Mary the sweet heart. Are you the decision maker in your so company? The- Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives but those points amount to less than they're worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor, and Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now, get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash free. Ramp.com slash free.
RAMP.com slash free. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. To have a roof over your head, a nice roof over your head, is very important. That's Rick talking about his experience with Rhino Shield ceramic coating. We got Rhino Shield 18 years ago, and they're very cooperative on getting us the right paint. They're in and out and done in no time. Once it was finished, it looked great. We were very happy with it. The main reason Rick called Rhino Shield is because it's backed by a 25 year transferable warranty. We've watched a lot of people get their house painted three or four times, and we haven't had do any of it. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to have to paint it every five, seven years. Take a tip from Rick and put down the paintbrush and call Rhino Shield for your free evaluation. 877-25-RHINO. 877-25-RHINO. Or visit 877-25-RHINO.com. We got Rhino Shield 18 years ago. Financially makes sense, especially if it's going to last like this did. Still looks great. Call now. 877-25-RHINO. Or 877-25-RHINO.com. Rhino, go Rhino Shield. Never paint your house again. Rhino Shield. Surprise! 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 You know, 